Robin, an MC Romance, Outlaw MC Book 4, written by Ethan Egorov, narrated by Richard Manley. Chapter 1. Kit. I'd ask for a different brother, but I don't think it works that way. No, it doesn't. I laugh at Amy, my sister, who says that on a daily basis to me. Well, if you worked at a different clinic, we wouldn't have this problem. I sit next to her behind the desk, even if I'm not really allowed to. I slept with her boss anyway, so it's not like she will get in trouble. Which she never thanked me for, by the way. How many clinics do you think we have? I already checked. Not many worth working at. Every time you come here, it's like living out a nightmare. My baby brother is a total slut. She kicks the bottom of my chair and makes it spin, but I only laugh at her because it's not like I do this on purpose. She only works at the community clinic for her clinical hours, plus to pay for med school. Amy is only a year older than me, yet she calls me her baby brother. Maybe because she's smarter, smart enough to go to med school anyway. But I get checked every three months for STDs and all that jazz because I may be a slut, but I'm a clean one and she suffers the embarrassment of all her co-workers any time that I do. Yeah, well, you knew that. How about I tell you when I'm coming, and you can take the day off? I flick her nose, and she swats me away. Amy looks just like me, blonde curly hair and brown eyes, and I had to learn at a young age how to throw a punch because of all the guys she had coming around in high school when she... Yeah. But it was only one or two because she has sense, unlike me. That won't work. It lasts the whole day. What are you up to, anyway? She asks me. I laugh under my breath because her turquoise scrubs are still funny to me. She looks all official and not playing doctor like when we were kids. Um, uh, about to go to the club. Same old shit. And celebrate your clean bill of health? She waves my test result before filing it in the drawer. I chuckle. Yeah, pretty much. But I'll be home for dinner, or try to be anyway, I tell her. I have stipulations for my hookups. Makes it easier. Sometimes I'll dabble in the occasional two- or three-week thing, but after that it gets boring. They only want the excitement of the cut. That's what it's like to be in an MC. And then I get bored with the vapid hotness I tend to seek out. I don't always go for looks, maybe just a nice ass or something. Needless to say, I've had all types. And I don't do it to prove a point. It's a lifestyle choice, just like hot yoga or some shit. But I never bring them to the house. If I go to theirs, I don't sleep over, and I don't really go out in public with them. Small towns talk. I'd never be able to have fun if the women kept telling each other to look out for me. Good, because it's your turn to cook. Amy giggles. We live in our parents' house. They died when we were in high school, but Amy was 18, so I could stay with her, and the house was paid off. Fine, I'll take it. I stand up and hug her over the head, the way I know she hates. See ya. I kiss her cheek and she yells, Diseases! over my shoulder as I leave. But the joke is on her since I never really kiss them. Not on the lips, at least. Either of them. I hitch my bike off the side of the building and head to the club. It's a short drive off the route, but I enjoy every second of it. This town hasn't changed in all the years I've been here, which is my entire life. Our parents came here after they met. We don't really know the whole story because they weren't the talkative type. Or even all that parental. So when they died, it wasn't that much of a tragedy. Amy still handled it better, though. I took to making trouble at school. I planned on going to college until my last summer here was spent hanging out with the wrong crowd. It was Tank that helped me get out of it. But back then... I just knew him as the annoying hard-ass until I wasn't a prospect anymore and joined the club. My quality as an intimidating guy, physically, set me on the path to be one of the enforcers. Which just means I fuck shit up and scare guys shitless before they can do anything to us. Which has been happening a lot since the Devil's Princes have been up our ass. Turf wars come around every now and then, but this one is sticking. Rafe has been up the wall about it, so his frowning face doesn't surprise me when I walk into the club. You look like an old man. I cross the bar space to where he sits by the dartboard. We shake hello, and he loosens his grimace a little bit. 
I sit on the stools across from him and cross my arms. It's damn hot outside in the summer, and I take my cut off, too. All this shit is making me an old man. I don't know how Tank did it. He turns his empty beer bottle around as he goes off in thought and then blinks it away. Rafe had to step in as president from his role as vice president when Tank left the club abruptly. Some people thought it was because Spencer, a prospect at the time, got involved with his daughter Janine. Everyone in the club knew that girl was off limits. I came around when we were about the same age. Even at 17 she was a looker, but I knew better than to do anything about it. One of the other guys wasn't so lucky, and I don't even remember what happened to him. But now her and Spencer are together. Tank didn't kill him. It's all really different. Even Rafe found someone, a lawyer, and I thought his uptight ass would be alone forever. That was all about two years ago, though, so the change in leadership isn't really thought about anymore. He didn't have any clubs trying to take him down. Right, so it's my fault, Rafe chuckles. Aw, oh, don't pout, kittenhead. I kick his shoe. And you know how those clubs are. They think the change makes us weak or something, when it's the opposite. You handled it fine, though. I thought it was all good. I swallow. Suddenly I'm thirsty as hell and need a beer or something, but I told myself to cut back on the day drinking. But still, it's almost six, and I'm starting to let that reasoning go. I'm not pouting. Where have you been, anyway? He asked me. I usually hang around the club most days, working in the garage. The car repair business is my thing, probably because it's one of the only things I know how to do. But really, it's just another way to hide our money. The t-shirt shop and the bar here do that, too. Either way, we get real business there. But today was also my day off, technically. The club is home, so I don't really need a day off either way. I was at the clinic, I grin. He makes a face at me and shakes his head in mock disapproval. Hey, not everyone is blessed with monogamy. Gotta protect myself. I defend. He only shakes his head again and laughs. I get it. How's Amy? he asks. Enjoying her last year of med school, so to speak. Not much is new with her, I don't think. She isn't seeing anyone still? he asks me. I frown because the thought of it makes me sick. I mean... I'm a man. I know how much they can suck. Nope. I like to pride myself on that. I keep running them off, I laugh. The one or two that have come to the house I've personally interacted with and then never saw them again. If I'm enough to scare them off, they shouldn't be involved with her anyway. Well, you don't want her ending up alone. Gotta be careful with that. I wave him off. Anyway, how is Paige, I ask him. His lawyer-turned-girlfriend comes around the club every once in a while, but I know he tries to keep her removed just because of the illegal stuff we have going on. I don't know the specifics, but I'm pretty sure if lawyers know about crime, they have to report it. Or maybe I just watch too much television. And it's not like we hurt anyone or do anything to put people in danger. She's good, talking about kids, he half-smiles. Oh, yeah? She's pregnant? I ask him. No, at least I don't think. I keep telling her I don't know if I'm ready yet. You married her on a whim in front of the courthouse. I laugh at him. He shrugs. Well, that's different than being responsible for someone. Logan is a lot more mature than me, I guess. I can't really deal with surprises. He laughs. I nod in agreement. Logan was only with Chantal for a few months before she got knocked up by accident. He literally picked her up off the side of the road, all damsel in distress style. But he handled it well. Now their little guy is the talk of the town. Not that they gossip all that much, but our club is often talked about around town anyway. He doesn't come around that much since he's running an actual household now. No, you can't. All I know is that you gotta keep her happy. I even know that from just having a sister. You've never been in a long-term relationship. He laughs at me, and just as he does, Darius walks in the club and heads straight for us. He's been in and out of town a lot since the stuff with the Devil's Princess has been going down, and we haven't really devised a plan of dealing with it yet. What are you two talking about? Darius shakes us hello and sits on the other stool. He's a big guy, about as big as me, but the dark hair makes him look scary. At least I look nice until I'm not. He just looks mean as hell. But he really isn't either. 
none of us are. Rafe hates kids, I joke. He frowns at me, but then we all laugh. That he does. Darius fills us in on what happened when he was out of town. The Devil's Princes and their president have been pushing back on everything, saying he can't control what his guys do outside of the club, but that's bullshit. Our cuts determine everything we do, and going after another club, whether it is an act of war or not, is a no-go. That's why this shit has been so difficult. No one wants to be at war with another club, especially since we have done so well to avoid it. Tank was responsible for that, but Rafe is killing himself to do the same thing. We agree to have another exec meeting soon and come to a vote about it. Figure a way to get rid of the rival club once and for all. The three of us chat up until the club gets half full of the weekend crowd and I let myself have a drink since the sun is going down. I spend a lot of time here, but it never really gets old. This is my family, and when I manage to drag Amy down here, we're all a family. At first, she didn't want me in the club, but when I started getting in less trouble because of the club, she supported it a little more. Another beer? Spencer asks me. He usually works the bar every other night. There are other prospects now to do it, but I think he just likes it. The tips aren't bad either. We all started there, so I know. Yeah, a bottle. I lean over the bar and wait for him to grab one. The two of us don't talk all that much, just exchange pleasantries. I take my beer and decide to go out to the garage. I like doing it at night, sometimes because then I can hear how the gears are running when I get it fixed better than I can see it. We get the same manner of stuff around here. Broken transmissions or oil changes. I like doing restorations, too, but those are every once in a while. I'm in the middle of one of the oil changes on a truck when a gangly sound runs up behind me, like an engine running in a body of water. I stop and stand up, looking out to the entrance. I shield my eyes from the headlights pulling up. Garage is closed. Come back tomorrow, I shout. This was an on-the-whim thing. I planned to do this and close the place for the night. Still, the car stays stalled, and then I find it kind of creepy that the headlights are still on, blinding beyond what I can see. I don't get too worked up, though. I can take a creep down. I wipe my hands on the rag and step forward under the garage light entrance, to the center of the car. I can see the emblem, an old Chevy, but that's about it. After a few seconds, I hear a soft voice, but can't really make it out over the engine and the bright lights. I don't really want to go around to the driver's side because I don't know what I'm going to end up seeing. Come back tomorrow! I wave my hand, shouting again. Eventually, the engine cuts and I frown because that's the opposite of what I wanted. Maybe they are just lost and need directions. Sorry, I got lost. A voice finally comes through, confirming what I thought, and when I notice that it's a woman, I relax a little bit. I'm less inclined to shoo them away now. No problem. Can you cut the light so I can see? I drop my hand and stuff the towel in my pocket. I hear the clicking, some confusion going on for a bit. This isn't your car, is it? I shout. Laugh once and come around the front of it, unlike before. When I get to the side mirror, I peer inside the glass and can only make out a head of light brown hair. I knock on the window and she jumps, maybe screams a little. I laugh again and can't believe I'm stuck with this flustered person. She does roll down the window, though, and I'm stuck looking at her face in a bit of shock. Whoever this is, she's the hottest girl I've seen in a long time, if ever. This confused vibe she has going on makes her full lips pout and her skin flush. I can only see that she has on a light tank top and jeans. Her eyes, big and blue, stare into mine momentarily, and I think we're both wondering what the hell is going to happen next. Chapter 2 Emily I get mashed peas thrown into my face, but it's not as bad as the spaghetti from yesterday. I don't know why I subject myself to this, honestly. Each day it gets harder to remember why. Then I recall going to school and getting a degree to do this exact thing. Early childhood education is the hardest career choice of all, I'm sure of it. Miss Danny, I want TV, the little tyrant says after tossing his lunch at me. My last name is Danielson, but that's the best he can say it, even though they can call me my first name if they want. After your math lesson, let's go. I finish wiping my face off and can level my head. 
This is my second house of the day. I am always exhausted by the time I get here. But... No buts, kid. Let's go. I laugh at him. He's kind of funny looking, and when he pouts, it's even worse. He has bright red hair like his parents and chubby cheeks like any five-year-old. I eventually coax him out of the kitchen and back to the dining room. That's set up like a classroom. Some parents decide to have preschool be the kids' homeschooling, and that's where I come in. I majored in early childhood education, worked at a preschool for a while, and then hated how structured it was. I just kind of started freelancing and ended up with a client list. Each year it varies, but I have three families this year to help space out the lesson times. It has to do with when their kid is the most productive. Robbie here is better in the evening. The other two are useless after 2 and 3 p.m., so my day starts relatively early. Robbie's parents are somewhere in the house. I think they enjoy the time to relax. It's not like being a nanny and having the dads hit on you. I don't know what I would do if any of them did, but they kind of understand that I'm a teacher like anyone else. Just not in a traditional school building. After his math lesson is finished, I have him do his end-of-the-day summary, and then I'm free to go. I'm exhausted, but like usual Fridays, I have to go and see my dad. He isn't all that old, but he is sick, so I had to put him in a long-term resort elder care type of place. It's just like living in an apartment building, except with nurses around the clock and structured days. I wanted there to be another way, but it is just the two of us, and I couldn't be there with him all the time to make sure nothing happened to him. It's not cheap, but it's the best thing for him, and I still hope he gets better one of these days. Dad? Hi? I knock on his apartment door and enter. They don't have locks, so the staff can enter if need be. I find him in his usual place by the TV, in a big leather armchair. He looks relatively okay. I get my brown hair from him and blue eyes, but Mom was blonde and we don't keep many pictures of her. When I was five, she decided being a mother was too hard, and then I never saw her again. Em, I forgot you were coming. He tries to stand, and I stop him. I know evenings are harder for him. That's okay, I brought dinner. I start getting out the food. He has to eat relatively healthy, but one day won't hurt him, and fried chicken is his favorite. I get his portions right, though, and give it to him. What did you do today? I ask him. He fills me in on his ride around the golf course, going to the movie center they have here, and then his mandatory exercise that he hates. Even talking a little bit gets him out of breath, and my heart goes out to him. But then it is my turn to fill him in. He laughs about the kids getting on my nerves, and briefly tells me about how I used to be the same way. I try to spend as many hours with him as possible, just in case our time really is limited, but I hate to think about it that way. I need a favor, Em, among all the other stuff you do for me. I giggle and wave him off. What is it? I guess it's kind of a gift, too. My Chevy. We should get it fixed up and then sell it. Help pay for all this, he says. Dad, you love that car, and it's fine. You know I don't have student loans. My apartment is cheap, I remind him. I got a scholarship for school, and I still have our house I grew up in. The mortgage is inexpensive because it is so old. I know, but it isn't doing much sitting here. And you don't have to sell it. You loved it when you were a kid. I don't know. I just think if we got it fixed up, then when I'm ready to drive it again, I can. He looks at me, and I see the feeling in his eyes. It makes me sad. But I have hope, too, that one day he'll get better and won't need to be less mobile. He was a car collector back in his time, and... That Chevy was meant for someone else, but apparently I loved it while he fixed it up and kept hanging around it, so he kept it. A few months ago, it had a few problems with the transmission, so it can't really be used that much. He taught me all about cars, though, and if I had the tools, I would fix it myself. Okay, Dad, I'll get it fixed for you, I tell him. He smiles more than I've seen in a long time, and I'm glad it makes him so happy. I stay with him for a little longer and clean the place up a bit. I have the keys to the Chevy, but have to drive my car home first and then drive it out since it is parked at the house. I'm sure any mechanic shop will be closed by the time I get back, but I still set out to find one. 
I've lived here my whole life and only know of one place, the motorcycle club that some people hate and think it's dangerous, and others think it's hot as hell and crowd the place all the time. Whenever I came home from college, I would hear new rumors about who hooked up with whom, who was the worst of all of them. I never really paid mind to it because I didn't think I would have to interact with them, yet here I am. I peel off the route and know the car has reached its limit. It's old and the last restoration was temporary. But it looks like the garage is closed, or closing soon, and I feel bad. I'm exhausted and wish the day was over already. When the guy comes out, I can barely make out what he is saying, and in the dark, it's harder to see the controls in the car to shut the headlights off. It's pretty embarrassing, since I know how to use cars and it looks like I don't, but the guy comes around to the driver's side and half scares me to the death. I roll down the window and then I'm just shocked. He looks like a fucking Greek god. Honestly, with the blonde hair and hard square jaw, full pink lips and a half smile and his multicolored eyes staring at me. I feel awestruck. He's tall from what I can tell and widely muscled. Need some help? He asks and his voice is deep but somehow still soft. He looks a lot more intimidating than he sounds though. No, I lie, with the light coming in from the garage. I can easier see the dash and cut off the headlights. I was just about to close up, he says, leaning into the car. For some reason, I don't pull away, my personal space being invaded. Instead, I lean closer and fight a smile. The way he is looking at me, his eyes are so intense and his smile even more so. He is dangerously hot. And I don't have to be an expert to know he is probably in the club, too. All the rumors are telling me to stay far away, but my mind is refusing to remember them right now. Even his cologne is swarming the small space of the window, and it's warm like the weather, yet cold like the sharp scent of pine. I'm sorry, I was working all day, and then I came here last minute. Can I just drop it off and come back tomorrow? I ask. If I drive it back with me, I'll have to come all the way back, and I don't think the engine will last that long. He seems to be contemplating like he isn't sure. I know exactly what's wrong with it. My dad restored it a long time ago, but it bottomed out again. It needs a new transmission and muffler, I tell him. To that, his eyes widen in shock. I guess me knowing what to do surprised him. I mean, I do it myself, but I don't have the right tools, I add. Plus, factoring in parts, shipment, and all that, I can't dedicate the time to it. This is the only thing my dad has ever asked me for, and I don't want to let him down. Well, I was about to close up, and I don't really come here on Saturdays, he answers. I frown a bit and slump in the seat. It's the old-fashioned one, where the front row is just one long red seat. Okay, I relent. He licks his lips and then crosses his arms on the dash of the window. I tense up a bit. He is a stranger after all, but he doesn't really look that way or feel that way. I haven't been this immediately attracted to a guy in a long time, if ever. But my past relationships were short-lived, and I never cared much for a connection beyond a few fun nights. The way my life is, it's much easier that way. What's your name? He asks me. What does that have to do with my car, I retort. He chuckles, a delicious, deep sound that I find myself hanging off of. Nothing, babe. I'm just asking. I'm Kit. He holds out his hand, half stained with grease that he tried to wipe off. Emily, I answer. I find him endearing, and he has this distinct quality about him. I can already tell he might be a major playboy, but that makes me feel slightly better at looking at him like he's a piece of meat. Nice to meet you, even though you're making my life harder than it needs to be, he jokes, and I manage a giggle. Look, I can park it in the garage tonight and come back Monday, as long as it's safe, I suggest making things easier on him. It was kind of shitty for me to come so late anyway, but the car wouldn't have lasted another long trip, or anything more than two minutes. That's okay. You can park it tonight and I'll have a look tomorrow. Under one condition, he adds. I give him a funny look and can only imagine what that might be. Have a drink with me, Emily, he grins, 
and I can tell he is laying on some full charm right now. A drink, I repeat as if in shock. He chuckles and nods. Yeah, babe, a drink. The bar is still open, unlike my garage here. Your garage? I look him over, and he really doesn't seem like the mechanic type. Yep, this is my place. So, honestly, it's up to me whether or not your car here gets fixed. He licks his lips. Well, that would be pretty shitty for you to leave me stranded. Not if you have a drink with me. So I'm paying you with my company? No, you're still going to pay me money to fix your ride, he laughs. I smirk and chew on my lip for a moment. He doesn't seem like a creep or anything, and we would be in a public place inside the bar. Plus, he is stupid hot. Okay, sure, I agree, without any reluctance at all. The last thing I expected was to run into a guy like Kit. I hope that's a nickname, but there are other pressing matters to attend to. He tells me where to pull into the garage. The engine has some trouble starting back up, and I'm glad I came tonight. I'll probably take a cab back home or something. After I park it and get out, I see firsthand how tall he is. Maybe it is because I'm barely over five feet, but he towers over me, and his body is so wide that I could hide right in front of him. It's a nice car, he comments as we walk in. I smile to myself, but don't tell him the whole story. Yeah, it's my dad's. I'm fixing it up for him, I tell him. Well, that's sweet, he grins down at me. I half smile and tug my purse tight to my chest. I suddenly feel exposed in my tank top. It's low cut and everything fits tight on me because of how I'm built. It's just so damn hot in the summer that I don't have much of a choice. He leads me inside and I'm hit with the sound of soft rock music slight smoke in the air and the smell of leather and alcohol. I was right about the MC. They all have leather jackets on. Well, most of them do. And some of the women are actually with the guys and not trying to hook up. What do you like? He pulls out a stool for me and I sit down. Anything, I tell him. He smirks and then flags down a guy at the bar who also looks like a male model. I wonder if that's a requirement to join. So, you're in this motorcycle posse thing, I conclude, smirking over my beer at Kit. He grins and shakes his head at me. I mean, that's not what I prefer to call it. He sits on the stool and his legs are splayed open in my direction. The tight denim wraps his muscular thighs, and his gray shirt does the same to his muscles. He went to wash his hands and then came back. The greasy mechanic look long gone. Either is fine with me. It's a club, he adds. I nod once and drink my beer. I'm tired and hungry from the long day, but soon the beer starts to fill me up a little. And you're a mechanic, I ask him. By trade. He leans forward and I get lost in his deep eyes. The way his gaze kind of sets me aflame. My whole body is leaning towards his, my lips tingling. Whoever this guy is, I want him. What do you say we get out of here? Chapter 3. Kit. I say that's a great idea. I smirk at Emily, whose bright blue eyes stare into mine intensely, and I know she wants this as much as I do. The thought sends all the blood in my body to one particular place. That's been dying to have her since I saw her sitting in that car. Let me finish my beer first. She giggles, and I shake my head at her, knowing she is doing that on purpose. I come across a lot of women who are hot for the kill, to be with an MC guy, and earn a rush to get me into bed. I'm used to that. But Emily wanting to slow things down drives me crazy and more excited all at the same time. Fine. I pull back slightly and take another swig of mine. Out of the corner of my eye, I watch her full lips curl around the bottle as she drinks. What gets me is that she isn't even trying to be sexy. She just is. Your place or mine? Emily stands up, tugging on her jeans before she grabs her purse. I'm half distracted by her rounded tits, pressing the fabric of her tank before I get my head screwed back on right. Mine, I say. And I don't even know why I say that but it just felt natural when it came out. 
Amy might just kill me, but that's the last thing I care about right now. I pay for our beer and then walk her out, knowing if any of the guys saw me, they would have a ton of shit to say tomorrow. Not because I'm leaving with a woman, but because Emily doesn't look like my usual type. I tend to end up with the blondes, or even a redhead here and there. But something about her warm brown hair has my brain spinning, along with the rest of her. She glances up at me as we walk out, and I slip my hand around her waist, keeping her close. The night air is cooler now, light from the moon casting over all the chrome in the parking lot. Have you ever been on a motorcycle before? I ask her, once I round the corner and reach where I parked my bike in the back. Oh, God, no, Emily laughs to herself. I grin at her and grab the helmet from under the seat that I never use. Don't worry, I'm an expert at it. Just hold on tight and you won't fall off. I smirk at her and she bites on her bottom lip as she looks up at me. Wouldn't you like that? She murmurs. I get the helmet situated on her and she swings her purse over her shoulder, the strap against her plush tits. I may not even make it home. So is this a thing you do often? She asks me. I jingle my keys in my hand and give her a funny look. What? This. The curtailing of women on your bike. She giggles. I smile, but it doesn't reach because I realize at the same time that I've never led a woman on my bike, along with never bringing one to my house either. I'm sure it should be weird, or at least feel like that, but it doesn't for some reason. Maybe I'm becoming less of an ass. Or Emily is just different. Either one doesn't sound like they would end very well, so I just shrug it off. Are you asking me if I'm a man whore? She laughs aloud, her cute little nose scrunching up. Not really. Okay, I'll be fair. Usually quite a bit, but they usually take a cab if that makes you feel any better. I move to straddle my bike so she can let my words soak in, and also so I don't have to see her immediate reaction. After a few seconds, she gets on behind me and I relish the feeling of her soft body pressing on mine. Now I see why the other guys enjoy it so much. I can feel every plane of the front of her body and the muscles on my back. And when her hands wrap around my front, dangerously close to my cock, I'm inclined to make this ride last as long as possible. Unfortunately, I don't live that far from the club. A few miles on the route and then off to the community, where my house is right in front. Amy's car isn't there and I breathe a little sigh of relief. She camps out in the living room and would have seen us walk in. Well, this is cute. Emily comments when she gets off the bike. I watch her take in the house, colonial style, with white brick and blue porch swings, very old-fashioned. It's like a farm dropped on your house, she giggles. I find her smile adorable, and instead of waiting until I get inside like a normal person, I walk around the bike to her and grab her by the waist, kiss her like the sun hasn't already gone down and I'm waiting for the last sunset. Her whimper of shock is short-lived, and then her lips move against mine, so soft and pliable that I find it hard to breathe. I inhale sharply, her sweet scent filling my senses, and I deepen the kiss, coaxing her lips apart. She suckles my bottom lip, and then we alternate, until my tongue swipes against hers and we dance together, her taste swirling around my mouth. Her hands clutch my biceps over my cut, and suddenly all I want is to feel our naked bodies against each other. I break the kiss and grin down at her half-shocked face, her full lips pursed and a bit swollen. This used to be farmland. That was the farmhouse, I tell her. Most people don't really know about the neighborhood history in the town. That is, unless they knew my parents. Before they passed, they were land developers and their grand whoever's on the house. Wow, so is it haunted? Emily starts walking up the path and my gaze goes right to her ass without any shame. No, I don't think so, I laugh. And you don't have a secret wife or anything that will come and beat me with a frying pan? She stops at the front door and I flood the space, towering over her and leaning against the doorframe. No wife. The only girl coming tonight is you. I lick my lips and we both laugh at how corny that was supposed to sound. 
Nice one. She steps aside so I can unlock the door and I lead her inside. I'm sure she doesn't need a grand tour and I don't bother with it, besides asking if she wants something to drink. I was really hoping she would say me, but maybe it is too soon for that. We walk upstairs, where my room is right off the landing. She walks into the wide space, stopping by the bed. For the record, I don't do this very often, she warns. She takes off her purse and lets it fall to the floor, taking off her shoes. I smirk at her and unlace my boots. So why do it at all? I ask, discarding my socks. I catch her pink-painted toenails in the dim light and realize that's almost a turn-on for me. I flip on the light switch, using the dimmer to tone it down. Because you're kind of hot, and it's not just because I feel bad about coming by the garage really late, she says. I chuckle. Good, because I don't mind that. And only kind of hot? Where's the rest? I cross the space to her, lifting her to sit on the bed. I don't know about the rest yet. She slides her arms around my neck and leans into me, her legs coming around my hips to put her at the perfect height. We still have way too many clothes in the way, but I'm not as much in a rush to get it over with as I usually am. Okay, fair enough. Well, I already know you're smoking hot. Is it bad that I like you more? I joke, leaning in to kiss her lips once. I pull back and watch her smile. No, but do you have rules, you know, for one-night stands, if that's what this is? She swallows, and I see the slightest bit of indecision in her eyes. At asking in the first place or something else, I don't know yet. I don't know the answer either. I don't have rules, but I'll be completely honest. I usually never see them again, I say, half smiling. I don't really have to cushion the blow at all because she just laughs. Well, you have to see me again. You're my mechanic, she giggles. I grin again and shake my head once at her. Hmm, your mechanic. I wonder what it is I can fix, I chuckle. She laughs at me and slides her hands down my chest. You're corny. She smiles and it lights up her whole face, her eyes twinkling and everything. My cock is painfully hard, and I rub it against her inner thigh just to see her reaction. Her cheeks darken immediately, and I can't hold this off any longer. You know what else I am? I lean in close to her, my lips brushing against hers. She trembles a little bit, her warm breath fanning over my lips, her sweet scent surrounding me. I drag her closer, where her thighs are wrapped around me and rub my cock against her again the denim in the way, but still enough to feel it down my spine. Her body tightens the same way mine does, and she pulls away enough to look in my eyes. The way her blue orbs open up to mine is unnerving, and I want to kiss her almost more than I want to fuck her. I have a feeling you're about to show me. Chapter 4 Emily Kid is the sexiest man I have ever seen. I don't care that I don't know if that's a nickname or not that I have no idea where I am, but what matters is how it feels when he touches me, when he kisses me. You bet I am. His lips crash against mine, and it is more intense than before. This kiss has a purpose and an eternal end point. His tongue laps over mine immediately, and I disappear into the kiss. My hands roam over his body, feeling his muscles over his leather and the fabric of his shirt. I take his jacket off. It falls to the ground with a heavy thud as he breaks the kiss, trailing his lips down my neck. I open my eyes to the bright lights and take a deep inhale. My body is already so warm and keyed up that I feel like I am melting. His lips find this sweet spot under my ear. He suckles my lobe and then goes down to my neck, trailing a slow circle with his lips. Oh my God. I roll my head back and clutch at his shoulders. I don't even think about him being a complete stranger, about this being the craziest thing I've ever done, well, since college. Sitting down with him to have a few meals first wouldn't have made a difference. I want him like crazy and there's no point in waiting. My hands fly to the hem of his shirt, desperately trying to get it off. When I do, I stare at his muscled chest in awe. 
His pecs are wide and his abs taper down to an Adonis belt leading to the imposing bulge in his pants. He notices me looking and I hear him snicker when he pulls away. My heart races when he lifts up my shirt. His calloused palms run up my stomach and the heat sears my skin. Once my top was off, he tosses it across the room like it was nothing, leaving my black, ordinary cotton bra on display. Damn. He licks his lips and tightens his jaw. What? I giggle, kicking my legs out. He slides his hands down my thighs and then starts undoing my jean button and zipper. And now I'm really glad I didn't miss my last wax appointment like I wanted to. Nothing. I was really hoping you wouldn't be perfect underneath all these clothes, he says, and I stare in disbelief a little. But that happens when your ex thought you could be a size smaller. The way Kit stares at my body like he wants to own every part of me is flattering as hell. Sorry to disappoint, I giggle. He smirks at me and slides my jeans down my legs, kneeling down to place kisses over my thighs. I watch him as long as I can as he trails kisses up my body. But then he strips my panties away and kisses my throbbing clit, sending me into a mini frenzy. My body falls against the bed. His dark green sheets are soft and almost feel like silk against my body. They're the best I've ever seen on a guy's bed, honestly. I focus on the plain white ceiling fan as he starts licking me, so sure in all his movements. The swirling of his tongue is mind-blowing. My body hasn't been this coiled tight in ages, if ever. Kit, don't fucking stop. I clutch his head between my thighs and slide my fingers through his thick, blonde hair, the locks so soft I can barely feel them. He groans against me and I feel it send me over the edge before it does. It's like two orgasms in one because he doesn't stop as soon as it happens. He keeps going until the tremors leave my body and I'm completely sated. Holy shit, I laugh aloud. He chuckles and leans back. I watch him lick around his mouth and blush at the sight of it. Then he stands fully up and I get the perfect view of his sculpted body. It almost isn't right how damned hot he is. And to think he came out of nowhere, I wasn't expecting this at all. I agree. His smile is bright, and I'm sure that it was bold of him to go down on me on the first night, but probably because I told him this isn't really my thing. And as much as I would like to suck him off, I have a feeling that wouldn't be a very good idea. I lean up and take my bra, eliminating that part of the whole process. My nipples have been aching for his touch, my breasts relaxing at being free for the first time in this long day. His eyes go right to them, and I watch them grow darker, hungrier. I realize I'm completely naked on his bed, and he still has his pants on. Kit rectifies that and takes off his jeans, kicking them to the side. His dark briefs hug at his cock, and while it's as big as I thought, there is something else I notice that has me a bit confused, but I don't remember why when he moves away and grabs a condom from the drawer. He tosses it on the bed next to me and my heart pulses in anticipation, in tune with my still thrumming body. I sit up and reach for his briefs. While I pull them off, he pulls me into a kiss that turns my head. I feel it in my bones when he kisses me, his lips circling mine in a way that's not too hard or too soft, but just right. I lose my breath and break the kiss, panting when he steps out of his briefs. Oh my God, I laugh aloud, my hand flying to my mouth when I see his cock. His very hard, impressive, pierced cock. I think that's the best reaction I've ever gotten. He licks his lips and slides his hands up my thighs again, holding me at my ass. I didn't think people actually got those. I reach out and touch him. He jerks at my hand and I wrap around his base pulling up to where the piercing sticks out. He groans under his breath and seems to grow harder in my hands. They do. I'm the poster boy. His voice is deep and heady. Did it hurt? 
I ask, mesmerized by the way it looks against his skin, the way it seems to make him a thousand times harder. Nah, but not being inside you hurts. His hips press forward in my hand and I start to pump him harder. His lips fall open as his breathing quickens. I lean in to kiss his neck right over the hard muscle of his clavicle and then his hard jawline before I kiss his lips. It's soft and we take deep breaths every few seconds so we're literally breathing each other in. My body begs to have him inside me too, but I prolong the moment just because I can. I use my thumb to roll over the bud of the piercing and he shudders visibly as his breath catches. I do it again, a few times, before he can't seem to take any more. He pulls away and grabs the condom, rolling it on in mere seconds, and then pressing his tip against me. He drags me down the bed, so my legs are wrapped around his hips, his hard ass against my calves. Fuck me, Kit, I moan, his eyes catch mine and they darken with his smirk. He enters me in one thrust that stretches me. I loll my head back, feeling too damned good. The piercing is a little different, but I know without the condom in the way it would feel different. But it's still a new sensation. I rake my nails down his back and clutch at his ass as he buries himself in me. His lips slide down my jaw, and then he tilts me back a little for them to dive between my breasts. He goes over each of my nipples a few times, sucking and biting. It makes me clench around him more. It is impossible for him to be still, and then he really starts to fuck me. You feel good, Emily. Fucking amazing. His breath is at my ear, and I feel it travel down my spine right to where we meet. I want to agree with him, but it seems like I can't breathe, let alone speak. He just feels that good. And it isn't just about him being big or pierced or dangerously hot. There is a quality about him that I know should go beyond tonight, but I'm almost afraid to ask. I just enjoy the moment and him and how he seems to really let go. I want to stay wrapped around him, but my arms get tired. I lean back onto my hands and my breasts sway from his movements, the bed slightly creaking on the ground. His thrusts grow faster and I feel his cock growing inside me as I move closer to the edge. My moans are louder than ever, more uninhibited, and he seems to enjoy them. At one point, our eyes meet. They stay on each other before my orgasm takes me, blinding me. I fall back onto the bed and only my legs are wrapped around him, clenching him tight, like I am around his cock before he stills inside me. Emily. He grips my hips so tightly, I know it will leave the mark of his hand. His head falls back as he groans, the tendons of his neck constricting. Wow, I gasp. I throw my arm over his head and smile to myself. He pulls out and discards the condom. I open my eyes eventually and see him smiling at me. It'd be shitty if I took a picture, right? He leans against the bed, incredibly confident in all of his naked glory. Only if it's attached to a cloud, I giggle. I could have said the same thing about him. Right on. You thirsty? He asks. I sit up and he hands me his shirt. I slip it on and don't feel the slightest bit weird. A little, I lie. I could drink an entire gallon. Can I clean up somewhere? I stand and clear my throat. My knees wobble a bit and I grin to myself. Out back, he jokes, but for a second I think he is serious. Very funny. I roll my eyes at him, and then he directs me to the bathroom he has attached to his room. It's actually clean, and he keeps surprising me that way. The cabinets and countertop are white, his bath mats dark green like the sheets. It's all very homey and even better than mine. I use the bathroom and wash my hands, staring at my reflection in the mirror. I barely recognize myself. My eyes are so bright and my skin still flushed his little bite marks all over the place. I feel like a different person, too, and I didn't think sex could do that, or 
Maybe it's just good sex. I don't know. After I psych myself up, I go in search of him. He isn't in the bedroom where I left him. Kit? I call out, but this house is huge. I would probably have to scream for him to hear me. I find my way back to the way we came in and then towards the kitchen. It looks like something out of a home improvement show. The way this house feels more like a home tells me he probably doesn't live here alone or didn't at some point. But once I keep moving, I find him behind an open fridge door that looked like a cabinet at first. Hey, I sit down on one of the stools, the cold metal hitting my bare legs. Oh, there you are. He closes the fridge and hands me a bottle of water. I'm shocked to find that he is still naked when he leans over the cabinet in front of me. Thanks. Why are you naked? I giggle once and then down the water in a few gulps like I knew I would. He really tired me out. Because this is my house, he laughs. It's a really nice house. I doubt you did this all yourself. He grabs at his chest. I'm hurt. He leans on his forearms and it makes his muscles bulge up more. But no, I didn't do this myself. It was my parents' house, he answers. There is a tinge of sadness in his eyes and I'm guessing they aren't around anymore. Well, it's beautiful, very homey. Or is that what all the girls say? I giggle. He licks his lips and that sadness in his eyes disappears. I wouldn't know. They don't come to the house. Oh, so there's a lot of them? I joke. I don't think my body count is as high as most people think it is, but I will say I don't usually bring them to my house. He sighs. Silence passes between us, and I'm not sure if I should be shocked or flattered or confused, or all of them. So why bring me? I ask, almost afraid of the answer. He exhales deeply and then comes around the counter. His eyes bore into mine, and I feel my body starting to come alive again. Just the way he looks at me. Because I like you, Emily. And I don't tend to like girls very often. It's more of an inclination, led by my dick. He grins. And it's not just your dick that's inclined to me, I repeat in confusion. And he only nods once. I lick my lips and bite down on my bottom lip before they curl into a smile. I'm flattered once again, both at his honesty and the way he uses it. It's not a ploy or meant to trick me, and I appreciate that. No, Emily, it's not. You don't like me, too? I think I like your dick more at this point, I joke. He laughs with me, and we both laugh for a bit. Okay, fine, I guess I like you, too. And this house, I add. Fair enough. Maybe I'll give you the tour at some point. But for now, I'm starved. He walks off to the fridge, and I'm a little shocked at him making food for the both of us. I suppose warming up leftovers isn't really making food. We are joking around when the front door opens and shuts, and I think at that point he remembers he is naked. But I am just wondering who has a key to his house. Maybe he lied about not being married or having a girlfriend. In his defense, I didn't ask about the girlfriend, but that's neither here nor there. Don't get any ideas, Emily. He holds up his hand and stays behind the counter. When shoes come through the entryway, I tense up and wonder if I should run away or something. But Kit seems perfectly relaxed, so I think it can't be that bad until a woman comes around the corner. Holy shit! Her eyes are wide, whoever she is. She's tall, blonde, and very pretty. But I just prepare myself to make a run for it. I don't know if you're screaming about me being naked or coming in after your curfew, Kit jokes, and then I wonder if that's his daughter or something, but he is way too young and she's too old. Fuck off. She drops her purse at the mail counter, and then I notice she is wearing scrubs. Maybe he has a nurse? Honestly, I'm just throwing out the weirdest options and hoping that they stick. Okay, Emily. Amy, my asshole sister. Amy, this is Emily. I'm going to find something to wear. He winks at me and then walks off. I make a noticeable attempt not to look at his ass. I'm so sorry. I didn't know he had a sister or that he didn't live here alone, I confess. 
I swallow and feel really awkward, half naked in her kitchen, their kitchen, whatever. That's okay. I'm just surprised he had someone here. She giggles and grabs a soda from the fridge. And not that he was naked? Ugh, I wish. Kit is very free-minded, and you are very pretty. I'm shocked at that. She raises her brows and looks a lot like him in that moment. Thanks, I think. I cross my legs and hope Kit comes back fast. Luckily, he does, in a pair of gray sweats. Not much better, honestly. Intermission is up. You want some lasagna, Amy? Kit rubs her head and she punches his arm. I smile at their interaction and have one of those moments where I wish I wasn't an only child. Oh no, I already ate. I hope you weren't on a date or something. He takes the plate from the microwave, grabs two forks, and then sits next to me. What's so bad about her being on a date, I giggle. Thank you, Amy waves to me. Lots of things. Eat up. We have plans. He grabs my thigh, and I'm inclined to be embarrassed at him doing that while we have company, but he doesn't seem to care. Neither does Amy. I'm off to bed. Nice to meet you, Emily. She smiles at me and then leaves. I'm ready to tongue-lash Kit for not telling me she might show up, but his smirk leaves my train of thought off the rails. This is good, I say. Thanks. I didn't make it, he laughs. I smile at him and shake my head, eating more until I'm close to stuffed so I don't seem like a pig. But I feel like I don't have to be inhibited around him. I feel comfortable, among other things. So what are these plans you have in mind? Chapter 5. Kit The last thing I expected was for Amy to walk in. Maybe that sounds dumb, but honestly, she usually just comes through the back door if she's out late. Or maybe her annoying big sister Jean said that today would be a good day to irritate me, knowing I had a girl over. I'm prepared to hear it from her later, but for right now, I just need to put some pants on and get back to Emily. She blew my fucking mind. That's the only way to describe it. She doesn't just have a rocking body and killer smile. There was something else about being inside her that is driving my mind wild. I shrug on some sweats from the laundry room and go back to the kitchen. I was nervous about the two of them being in the same room, but it seems to be fine. Amy gives me her look on the way out, and I know she will be playing 20 questions with me later. At least her lasagna is good, and Emily seems to be enjoying it, among other things. I was thinking, you know, instead of driving back in the dark and whatnot, you could just spend the night, and then I'll take you back to your place in the morning. I can get started on your car on Monday. Is that all you have to drive? I ask her. I realize that was one rambling long sentence, and her eyes widen and narrow at me as I go on. Her tongue darts out to lick the last bit of sauce from her lip, and I'm focused on that for a good second before I can concentrate. No, I have a different car, and what if you're a serial killer that will kill me in my sleep? Her tone goes accusatory, and I laugh. If I were a serial killer, I probably would have killed you by now and not fed you a gourmet lasagna. I grin and lean in closer to her. She purses her lips, and then they curl into a slow smile. Well, fair enough. I guess that is better than making you drive me all the way back to my place. She holds eye contact with me as she drinks from her water bottle. I'm starting to think that she is doing all this on purpose. Yeah, I'm a smart guy, you know. I chuckle and stand up, grabbing the empty lasagna dish. I soak it in the sink and lean back on the counter, wiping my hands off with the rag. I look over at her, perched at my kitchen counter. I'm really not sure what is going on, why I brought her here in the first place, and then decided to ask her to stay. I just know that I like her company and that I'm glad she slipped into my garage last minute when I was there and not someone else. You're really gorgeous, Emily. I smile at her, and she looks at me like she doesn't believe me. Her cheeks flood with this blushed pink color that makes my cock twitch on the spot. 
Then she bites on her bottom lip to further that effect. Thanks. She crosses her arms and sits back in the chair. It makes the shirt tighten around the swells of her breasts, the peaks of her nipples coming through. I groan under my breath, thinking this woman will be the death of me. Her pouty lips and big blue eyes, the way her hair looks like honey and caramel at the same time, and her tanned skin is smooth all the way through. She isn't too thin, either. Has the perfect amount of meat on her bones. Those damn hips. At some point, I'm sure my cock visibly makes another entrance, when her eyes widen and start staring at my crotch. It's time for dessert, I say, another corny line that has her giggling. I cross the space to her and spin her in the chair, grabbing her thighs to spread around my hips. Kit! She can barely get my name out before I kiss her. I squeeze her flesh and swipe my tongue into her mouth, making her moan in approval. I grind my cock against her hot pussy through my sweats and immediately want them out of the way. You drive me crazy, Emily. I break the kiss and trail kisses down her jaw, finding this place under her right ear that makes her like putty in my hands. The feeling is mutual. She slides her fingers into my hair and tugs, her nails scraping across my scalp. I feel it down my spine, the pain and pleasure coming together. I lift her up and carry her over to the couch, not caring what Amy will have to say about it. But she'll never find out anyway. I drop her on the center of the black cushioned couch and go in search of condoms. I find them in the drawer of the entertainment unit and don't remember why I put them there, but I'm glad for it now. When I go back to her, I see she has taken off the shirt already, her full tits and wet pussy on display for me. What if your sister walks in? She says in a sudden panic. She knows the way back out, I respond, and her laugh fills the room before I come over to her and silence it with a kiss. I take off my sweats and settle between her legs, my hands roaming down her body like I could memorize how each inch of it feels in my hands. You're so fucking perfect, babe. I murmur into her skin as I kiss down her chest. I take my time going over the mounds of her tits, leaving little marks of my lips sucking on her skin. Oh, fuck, Kit. She grips my shoulders when I swirl my tongue around her nipple, my hand toying with the other. Her sweet pink nipples feel perfect in my mouth, hardening even more. I alternate and then kiss down her body, her belly button, where I dip my tongue. I look up at her. She stares down at me with a heated gaze, her blue eyes twinkling orbs of pleasure. I keep looking at her as I find the hard nub of her clit throbbing against my tongue. I kiss her there with an open mouth, licking my tongue from the hood to the top where all her sensitivity is. She trembles so much, like she is already in a mini freefall of orgasms. I hold her there, no matter how much she aches. Her pleasure gives me life, makes me want to have her even more. I squeeze her thigh and shush into her skin so she won't scream so much. I'm not that much of an asshole to my sister. Luckily, she gets the idea and muffles her moans, biting down on her lip. Oh, God. I'm coming. Don't stop, Kit. Emily practically begs me, her voice going high-pitched as she pants even more. Her thighs clamp around my face and I'm buried in her scent as she comes, a delicious frenzy of her tremors and sweet little moans. My lips leave her with a pop, and I lean up from her body, making a show of wiping at my lips and sucking her off my fingers. Her eyes go down to my cock, and then she takes it in her hand, gripping me and sliding her hand up to my piercing. I knew that thing was a good idea. She loves looking at it, and damn, I wish she could taste it, too. Our eyes are glued to each other as I dip my hand between her legs, slide my fingers through her hot flesh. I press two fingers inside her, curling upward, and then another one until she is stretched full and moans from it. Oh, my God, Kit. 
She bites her lip, and then they drop open as she gasps. She grips at my cock harder, swirling it around and flicking her thumb over my piercing. It sits right through the brim of my cock, where it's most sensitive. And every time she does that, my knees buckle, and I threaten to fall over right there. Fucking hell, Emily. My fingers pump her faster when she rolls my piercing under her thumb and uses her other hand to stroke my cock. She grows wetter around my fingers, her juices dripping down. My palm rubs her clit and gets her to another orgasm, and only then do I finally roll the condom on and get ready to fuck her. I hitch her thighs over my shoulders and open her up to me, the smell of our sex hitting the air. You gotta be quiet, babe. My sister threatened to throw me out way too many times. I joke with her. She giggles and nods once, but she's so keyed up that she looks dazed. I position myself at her entrance, sliding my cock through her folds before dipping it inside her. Oh God, kid, you feel so fucking good. She clutches the muscles of my ass as I drive deeper inside her. You do too, babe. Fucking perfect. I fall into a fast rhythm, one that doesn't let our skin meeting make too much noise, but still hard enough that her tits bounce in front of me. It's hard to believe that I just met this girl, and yet we are already so in tune with each other. Her body is like a siren to mine. Her pussy around my cock is like a willing prison I don't ever want to get out of. She takes my fucking breath away every time I bury myself in her. My cock threatens to come too soon, so I reach my hand down to rub her clit. She tightens up even more, and I know she will be close soon. My other hand grabs at her tit, and then I lean down to kiss her. Her lips are so soft and sweet. I keep it slow at first to feel them on mine. I don't kiss the same way I fuck, probably because I try not to kiss the other women that much. But with Emily, I could kiss her and still be happy. My tongue laps over hers, tasting her and letting her taste herself on me. She moans against me, her legs falling limp over my shoulders as she comes. It's harder to even thrust inside her, but my balls seize up soon after anyway, and then I'm coming so hard I see stars. I break the kiss as our lips hover over one another, breathing the same air as we come down. She wraps herself around me when I let her legs down and slip out of her. I kiss her again just for good measure. Her fingers slide into my hair, murmuring how amazing it was against my lips. I say the same thing and hold her close to me, our bodies a tangled mess of sweat and sex stuck together. At some point, I think we both get tired of laying there, or uncomfortable, and figure we should move. I pull back to grin at her. She smiles back, and it lights up her eyes again. She really is gorgeous. It isn't a line when I tell her that, but for some reason she doesn't believe me, and I don't know why. I want to make her, though. Time for bed. I've never shared my bed with anyone. I thought it would be annoying, honestly, but having Emily there is completely different. She wanted to shower first, and I knew she was tired, so I didn't join her as much as I wanted to. But I showered after her, and then we got into bed together. Once my head hit the sheets, I realized I was more tired than I thought, but I felt like I should savor my time with her or something. Is Kit short for something? She asked me. I look over at her. The way her wet hair spills over the pillowcase makes me smile. She was wearing makeup, but I guess I didn't notice. It looked natural, but now her blush comes through naturally, and I like it better this way. She has freckles under her eyes that I didn't notice before either. I'm not telling you, I chuckle. She moves and lays her head on her arms, laying on her stomach facing me. Why? She giggles. I shake my head and laugh at her. It's not like I don't like my name, but I have had quite the share of bullying over it, and I just stop telling people. Kit has been my name since junior year of high school. Because I don't want to. But you know my name, she pouts. Your name is normal, I laugh. So is it short for something? She nudges my thigh, and I shake my head, realizing that I gave too much away. Go to bed, Emily. I thought I wore you out. 
I rub her shoulder and laugh. She shrugs me off and giggles. We're both naked, but I'm completely spent and can control myself. If you tell me your real name, then I will. I just shake my head at her and pretend to close my eyes. Come on, kid, how bad can it be? I could just look at your wallet and find out. Tough luck. I legally changed my name. I lie, but I'm glad that she believes me. So our one-night stand means nothing. She purses her lips and makes a very convincing pout with her face. Who said it was just one night? I lick my lips and grin at her. She pauses her breathing in shock before her chest rises and falls again. I run my calf up her leg and lean into her, my lips dusting above her cheek. Go to sleep. I kiss her cheek and then pull back. After a moment, she gives up, rolling over to give me her back. I pull her close and swing my arm over her waist. I have never cuddled either, but with her, it's pretty enjoyable. Her body is so soft, her ass nestled against my cock, something warm for it to wake up to. She falls asleep before me, her breathing falling more even and slower. I don't know why it takes me a little longer, but once I do sleep, I dream for the first time in a long time. Chapter 6 Emily I wake up to Kit's cock pressed against my hip. It's not that I don't like it, I just literally forgot where I was for a second and got incredibly confused. Then I remembered everything that happened last night, how amazing it was, and I don't want to get out of this bed at all. This is the best Saturday morning ever, hands down. It's too bad that I have to use the bathroom, though. I carefully roll myself out from under his arm, draped over me, and head to his bathroom. His light snoring disappears once I close the door. I find out I'm a little sore from last night, too, but I freshen up and rinse with mouthwash since I can't find a toothbrush. When I go back in the bedroom, Kit has rolled onto his back and the sheet moved down putting his cock on display as it lays against his thigh. I smile at how perfect it is in that piercing. I never thought I would see one in real life. They were a thing of mythology for rock stars or some shit. I guess biker dudes can have them too, but he honestly doesn't even seem like that. The blonde hair and beach dude look he has doesn't match him being in the club. Neither does his personality but I guess I wouldn't know enough about it either way to be able to tell. I just know that he's interesting to me, and I'm really glad he wants this to be more than a one-night thing because I like him, too. It just worries me that he admitted to not doing this all that often. I don't want to feel like some special girl he picked up at his garage because I don't necessarily want to change him and then, and then end up in heartbreak if he finds out one girl isn't enough for him. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to know up front. But looking at how perfect he looks right now, all that leaves my mind, and I decide not to worry myself about it and just live in the moment. I climb back into bed, grabbing my phone on the way. It's not like I have friends that check up on me. Plus, it is the weekend, so nothing from work is there either. I almost want to text one friend I had in college that I only talk to every other month just to make her jealous. She's the kind of girl I imagined Kit would go for, but Stacy and I were just roommates who became friends. I don't text her, though. I just lay down with Kit and rest my head on his muscled arm outstretched on the bed. He smells amazing, even without his cologne. A pine and woodsy scent that reminds me of traipsing through the woods as a kid. I need to figure out how to initiate outdoor sex at some point. For some reason, I imagine doing it with him. His light snoring starts to break up, and his face shifts in his sleep like he is waking up. His cock starts stirring to that effect. I watch as it darkens and grows against his thigh, a thick vein starting to pulse through. I clench between my legs at just looking at him. He makes me out to be this sex-crazed thing that has no sense, only wants to have his cock inside me. My mouth waters, and I trail my hand down the plane of his chest. His muscles are so defined and cut that I wonder how the hell he got them this way. 
I run once or twice a week just so my clothes will still fit. I chew on my lip as he wakes up, his eyes blinking open as he rubs at his face. Good morning, I giggle. He grins and then focuses his gaze on me, a wolfish grin taking his face. Good morning. This is the best one I've had in a while. He leans over and kisses my lips, pressing them together before he parts them, taking my bottom lip between his. He sucks on it and then his tongue darts out to swipe my lip. My nipples harden at the same time my body shivers from the sensation. Now it's a great morning, I murmur when he breaks away. He chuckles and stretches out, not caring that his naked body is on full display. He even manscapes, and I swear if he keeps doing all these things right, I'll never leave. Wait here, I'll get decent and make us some breakfast, he says, and then he gets out of bed so I can watch his ass as he walks away. Yep, I'm never leaving. I do get up to find something to wear, though. One of his shirts I grab from the drawer. It smells like laundry detergent and his scent permanently on it. The black fabric falls over me like a dress because he is so tall, but it snags on my breast because they're so full. I'm trying to get the tangles out of my hair when he emerges from the bathroom, still naked until he puts on a pair of boxers. Your hair looks like a bird's nest, he cackles. I frown at him and give up. Thanks, I lie. I have naturally curly hair, but a good flat ironing every other day keeps it tame. But obviously I couldn't do that last night, so the curls are coming in, and not easily. It's cute. He walks over and kisses my nose, tugging his fingers through my hair. You like pancakes? he asks, looking down at me. The sunlight in his room is catching the hard line of his square jaw and making the locks of his hair even blonder. It's my only love, I grin. He leads the way down the stairs, and I find that it's earlier than I thought. I never wake up at nine, not even for work. I wonder how I have so much energy. It must be this Greek god in front of me whipping up pancakes from scratch. You know how to make them from scratch, I ask. I sit at the same chair as before, half concerned that his sister will show up again, but she seems cool enough. The real surprise is that I am so comfortable with him and have known him for barely 12 hours. It's like we're old friends who also have sex. Yeah, I watch a lot of Food Network, he explains. I shake my head at him and laugh. I make us a pot of coffee. He drinks his black and I have a heap of sugar and cream with mine. Must be why he looks like that. Did your sister leave already? I ask him out of curiosity. His back is to me, and he flips a pancake. Every time he moves, his muscles tense up, and I lick my lips at how delicious they are. No, it's her day off, so she'll probably sleep until noon, he scoffs. I giggle at how much like siblings they are, and it's nice to see that actually exists. Is it just the two of you that live here? I ask him. He comes over with two plates of pancakes and syrup and butter already on the counter. We have been since our parents died. We were lucky enough to keep the house when they passed, he says. His voice barely changes, and it seems like he is really at peace with them passing, which is kind of shocking. I can't even talk about my mom, and she's not dead. She just abandoned us. Oh, I'm sorry they passed. Was it sudden? I ask and it seems like really heavy talk for the morning or having just met, but he doesn't seem to mind. I stack butter and syrup and take a bite. They taste just like restaurant pancakes. Yeah, a car accident. He talks with his mouth full now. But it's not like anything really changed, because they weren't around much when they were alive. They worked a lot, land developers. They built this entire neighborhood from their company, so... It left Amy and I a bunch of money and a company neither of us wanted to run. He shrugs his shoulders and glances over at me. I'm staring intently and trying to figure out what to say. So what happened to it? I ask him. Well, nothing really. It's the same. But their VP is running it now. I only have to deal with it once a year when they tell us how much money they made or lost or trying to expand. 
We always turn it down, but they keep asking. I guess it's not a bad thing, since I'll always have that to go back to. I keep eating and try to find the right response. It sounds like he is already dealing with it, besides not wanting anything to do with the company. It is good. Part of them, I guess. He nods. Yeah. We keep eating in relative silence. Being around him is surprisingly easy, and he is great company to keep. You don't have any family drama? He asks me. I giggle once and shake my head. I'm not as good at dealing with stuff as he is, and, and here I thought he was seeking out slews of women to cope, when it's just how he is. Not really. My dad is sick, and my mom ran out on us when I was five, I tell him. My dad and I don't really talk about it. He feels bad for me on Mother's Day and my birthday family holidays, but it got better over the years. Sorry about that. That sucks. Is your dad okay, though? His brows tighten, and he turns to face me on the chair. I nod. Yeah. He stays at a resort type of place that takes care of him. The Chevy was his, and he asked me to get it fixed up, I explain. He half smiles and nods at me, his hand cups my knee, and he drags me closer to him. Well, I'll do my best work, then. He smirks, and I grin naturally at him. Thank you, and these pancakes were amazing. I lean back in the chair absolutely stuffed. I have eaten more between last night and now than I have all week. You're welcome. He pats my thigh and smiles fully at me. This is nice, you know. I'm starting to understand my friends at the club a little better, he says. What do you mean? I giggle. I mean that I used to make fun of them for being all smitten over a girl. Oh, it's not so bad, I laugh once. He licks his lips and gives me a long look. His eyes fleet like he is thinking about something and then gives up entirely. Have dinner with me tomorrow, he finally says. I swallow and stare at him passively. I don't know why I thought this would be a hookup type of thing, that I wouldn't even see him in public. I don't have to guess to know that he hasn't really done that either. I mean, I know that we're young and all, men take a little longer to grow up, but part of me is worried that thinking I can change him will only end bad for me. The softness in his eyes, though, and the way he is looking at me now make me change my mind entirely. Okay, I agree. That seems to really make him happy, and I smile at knowing that. We chat for a little longer, and then he starts cleaning the area up. It's nice to know that he isn't super messy and has normal living habits. Seriously, it's refreshing and surprising how many men don't. But after that, I know that I need to get going, do my usual weekend chores so my life doesn't fall apart all because of a good-looking guy. I never thought that could even be a thing until him. I get dressed and then we get going. He has on faded jeans and a plain white shirt under his jacket. At some point I want to ask him about this club thing that he's in. I don't really understand it, but I table that for later. When he drives me home I get to wrap myself up tightly around him and feel his heart thudding through his back. I can tell he is in his element when he's on his bike, the way he drives it so smoothly and doesn't even flinch at the hard turns the way I do. But I feel safe wrapped around him, that nothing will happen to me when I'm with him. I know I probably shouldn't put that much trust in him, but it comes naturally to me. All the things in my life that are going on disappear when I'm with him. When we pull up to my house, I barely recognize it with this new lens I have on in the way I think about my life. Your humble abode, Kit jokes. He smiles and helps me take off the helmet. It's heavy and hard like concrete. Pretty much. I walk up the stone path with him following behind me. I like how he walks me to the door and stuff like that. It's chivalrous. I had a nice time. Thank you, I tell him, finding my keys in my purse. He nods. On my porch, he looks out of place, but only because I'm not used to it, and he is so damned pretty. I could say the same to you. He remembers we don't have each other's numbers, and we exchange them. I'll pick you up at six. Okay, I smile. 
He smirks and leans down to kiss me. It's soft and sweet. Leaves me something to think about when he walks away. Safely in my house, I lean against the front door and try to figure out how my life got so different in only one night. Chapter 7 Kit I leave Emily's house wishing I could turn around and go back. That's saying a lot for me because I usually don't even see a girl the next day, let alone have breakfast with them and take them home, and ask them on a date. I honestly don't know what I was thinking. It came out before I could even really think about it, but it felt right. Especially the part where she said yes. I don't think I have ever taken a girl out on a date, either. The concept is completely foreign to me, and I am not looking forward to how I might screw it up. I'm inclined to ask one of the guys at the club, but I don't want them hounding me about it. When I peel out of her neighborhood, I realize why it looks so familiar when I was driving up to it. My parents owned half the communities in this town, and her house is sitting right in the middle of one of them. She seems to be doing okay, but I know that the board of the company right now are a bunch of money-grabbing assholes. Last year, they talked about tearing everything down and rebuilding new complexes, to which my sister and I vetoed. But I have a feeling that it is only a matter of time before they pull that shit again. Anyway, I don't really plan on telling her because there is no way I could explain it in a reasonable way. I don't even understand the half of it. When I get to the club, I feel more at home than I do even at my own house. The garage is empty, besides Emily's Chevy. I smile at the excitement of getting started on it for her. I park my bike in the back and then look over at the tally of orders that I have. Everything from last week was picked up. Even though I said I wouldn't work on the weekends, I get started on the Chevy. It's a nice car, definitely an antique. But it shouldn't be that hard to get running again. I go ahead and order the parts that it needs. It seems faster than waiting to ask Emily. Maybe it's weird that I am buying something for her already, but it doesn't really feel like that. I didn't ask her what she does for a living, but most people have a hard time these days. It makes me grateful to know that my parents left behind all the stuff they did, but I am still not inclined to take part of it. You're working on a Saturday? I'm shocked. Darius's deep and less than chipper voice comes up behind me. I nearly hit my head on the iron rail of the car suspension when I turn around. Yeah, so am I. What are you up to? I grab my jacket from where I left it on the table and walk outside with him. He doesn't have his cut on, only an overly tight shirt, but on him it's just because he lifts weights more than he sleeps. So I assume he is coming from the gym with the athletic shorts he has on, too. But nothing. About to head out of town, he answers. I stop by the back entrance of the club and sit on one of the boxes. It is way too fucking hot outside for my own good. I don't really like the heat when I'm not driving fast on my bike to make up for the lack of a breeze around here. Oh shit. Again? I ask him. He has been in and out of town since the shit with the Devil's Princes started going on. He's one of the enforcers, so when the club needs to lay a heavy hand down, we send him. Except they aren't so keen on listening. Their prez has been trying to slow shit down, but his guys don't listen. Tank and Rafe both never had a problem with that. Everyone at the club respects them and wouldn't dare go out and start trouble. Unless they wanted us to, of course. Yep. I don't know how long I'll be gone this time, though. I wish they would just drop dead some of these days, he scoffs. I laugh at him. Don't say that too loud. Someone might hear you. I shake my head at him. Rafe called for a meeting today, too, and I'm not sure why. I only sit on the exec board because Tank wanted to keep a close eye on me at first, and he thought I had a level head. I probably got that from my business tycoon father. A club is kind of like that sometimes, except with the occasional crimes. Yeah, right. Let's go inside. It's fucking hot. I nod in agreement. I feel like my balls are shrinking from the heat. 
We step into the cold A.C. of the club. Logan is over at the bar, and the old guys are lounging by the pool table. We sit at the bar, and Logan is already sliding us fresh beers. Shouldn't you be taking care of a baby? I joke. He laughs and shakes his head. No way. He's teething. He makes a face. Darius laughs, too. Yeah, that's no fun, he says. He was six or seven when his little sister was born, so he would remember that. It's also why he is good with kids, too. He's the only guy at the club Logan would let watch his son. Yeah, but seriously, Chantal said she felt bad that I wasn't spending as much time at the club. I'm just humoring her, he explains. I later find out that after he knew he was going to be a dad, he thought about leaving the club which would have sucked, but at least Chantal could see how much it means to him. Even Tank's wife came around, and they're a happy family again. Fair enough. We sip our beers and catch up a bit. We see each other almost every day, but most of the time we aren't even talking. So, who was that girl you left with last night? Darius asks me, and I groan internally. I really hoped that no one had seen that, but I guess I can't be so lucky. Logan gets intrigued, too, and then they are both staring me down. I almost say I don't know what the big deal is before I remember I never pick girls up here at the club. It's mostly the gym or supermarket. The gas station is always a hit since they can see my bike, but here at the club, women hang around hoping to get picked up, and that's a little too desperate for me. No one, I lie. I smirk and drink the last of my beer. I told myself to stop day drinking, especially beer, since it's not all that healthy, but that keeps going out the window. Oh, come on. We all saw you chatting her up at the bar. At least we had the courtesy to leave you alone. Now I'm asking. Darius chuckles, and I know he isn't going to let it go. The two of us have been friends for a while, since I joined the club, and he is probably the only one that loves women as much as I do. Speaking numbers-wise, at least. Look, I don't really know her. I just met her yesterday. Yeah, but you never really know any of them, right? Logan snickers and shakes his head. I really hope my son doesn't end up like you. Hey! I'm a stand-up guy. At least I'm honest with them, I defend myself, knowing he was mostly joking anyway. She came into the garage super late with this old Chevy. I felt bad for her, so I gave her a ride home. And a ride on your dick, Darius deadpans. I frown, but confirm that's exactly what happened with the slight intermission in the middle. Thinking about Emily already has my defenses down. Something about her was really genuine and fun. I didn't feel like I had to pretend around her. Do you even remember her name, Logan smirks? I flip him off and laugh. Yeah, of course I remember her name. We are also going on a date tonight, so don't act like you have me all figured out, I say. I probably would have told them eventually, but I must just be that desperate for advice. I don't want to take her on a shitty date and make her think I'm only good for sex. I mean, I might be, but I don't want her to know that just yet. Oh shit, a real date? Or are you just going to have a picnic in your bed, Darius snickers. You know what? That might be a good idea, I lie, shoving his shoulder. They're both laughing at me, and I don't know why I even told them. Look, women are a lot simpler than we think they are. Just treat her nicely, and she really won't care what you do. But are you that serious about her? Logan asks. I knew he would have the level head first. He is older, but he never had a problem with this kind of stuff. Him and Chantal were friends first, but that was just because of how they met. He didn't want to take advantage of her, but we all knew it was a matter of time. I don't know, we just met but I know I've never asked anyone else on a date before, so I shrug my shoulder and wish I had something stronger than beer. Yeah, we know, Darius laughs. I frown at him, and it only makes him laugh harder. I know they are just messing around, but now I'm wishing I had thought this through more or gave myself more time than tomorrow. What kind of car was it? Logan asks me, changing the subject after more back and forth. 
A 69 Chevy, I think, I tell him. Nice, Darius chuckles. I realize it then and laugh too. I should figure out exactly what year it is before I tell Emily. I didn't need to know to buy the parts, or maybe I could just ask her. I have half a mind to text her, but I already know that I can't do it with the guy sitting here pestering me. Well, best of luck to you, Logan chuckles. Some people walk in and sit at the bar, and he has to go attend to them. Darius and I talk more about the club drama before Rafe comes in, too, and then we have the exec meeting. It's mostly the guys going back and forth, pissed as hell, until Rafe settles everything. When Darius comes back, we'll figure out how far they have gone and if there are still any outbreaks at the drop sites. We might have to suspend our business, but it hasn't really gotten to that yet. I have a headache by the time I leave, but honestly, I have other issues on my mind. Like what the hell I'm going to do for my date with Emily. Just watch some YouTube videos, Amy says, and she actually means it. I frown at her from across the dinner table and want to fling these mashed potatoes in her face. What? Don't look at me like that. This is unprecedented, she shrieks. I shake my head at her and only take pity because she looks tired as shit. Amy is graduating soon and working, so exams and work are hard on her, but that doesn't mean she can have fun at my expense or wear almost see-through shirts at the dinner table. I know that, but you're the one that's actually been on dates. I stab at my chicken and chew it angrily. Yeah, with guys that split the check and never went anywhere nice, she scoffs. Damn, that sucks. Even I know that. I may not know a lot, but I at least know a woman shouldn't have to pay unless she absolutely wants to. Well, then you're off to a good start. What does she like to do? Maybe start there, she suggests. I trail off in thought because I realize I don't actually know. I meant to text her today, but then kept getting sidetracked at the club. After the meeting, I went into the garage to get some work done. I don't know yet, but she seems really casual. Like, I don't think white tablecloths are her thing. Okay, so go to the movies. Then you can finger-bang her during the previews. She laughs, and I stare at her in disgust. I don't even want to know where she got that idea from, although doing anything with my finger to Emily sounds like a darn good idea. The movies is kind of high school, right? Eh, maybe. You could do it at home, make the snacks yourself, she suggests. I mull it over as I finish my grilled chicken. I'm eating healthy while she has a bowl of mac and cheese and chicken strips, but Amy has always had a fast metabolism and never had to lose weight. I was chubby until I started hitting the gym. Maybe. How did that test go, anyway? I ask her. She was home late last night because she was studying for it. Ugh, it sucked. I cried, but I got an A. She reasons. I laugh at her and realize I should be nicer to my doctors now. She wants to go into fetal medicine, but I don't even really know what that means. The both of us have very unconventional paths, considering what our parents did. I am sort of a mechanic and also an NMC. She wants to be a Grey's Anatomy character. It doesn't really make sense. Oh, good job. When is graduation again, I ask her? Sometime soon. I don't know. I try not to think about it. It just makes it more stressful. She sighs. I feel bad for her and rub her shoulder. Well, you're smart. It will be fine. But don't lose sleep because you need to study. It won't do you any good. Thanks, little brother, she jokes. We finish up dinner and she goes off to bed early maybe taking my advice to heart. I decide to go for a run, lace up my shoes, and hit the pavement to clear my head. I make it two miles and turn back. I'm thinking of Emily the entire time, of where I'm going to take her. I really want to see her, so bad I could go right now. But I shouldn't be clingy like that, or creepy. I call her instead as I walk back to the house under the streetlights. It rings a few times, and I think she won't answer, until close to the last ring she does. I smile at hearing her voice. So, you're one of those guys who calls instead of texts. 
Chapter 8 Emily I finished my last lesson plan and off for a shower. It's been a long day of coming home, falling asleep, eating, and then deciding I should be productive. I should have cleaned the house today, but I was so exhausted. My body is sore, and all I could think about was Kit. He is really charming and sweet, and that might be bad news, but I'm willing to take the risk for some reason. He wasn't like the other guys that I know, and I want to get to know him more. I half expect him to text me all day, knowing that I could text him too, but I couldn't bring myself to for some reason. I get out of the shower and towel off. Then my phone rings from across the room. I stub my toe trying to get it, thinking that it's a nurse from my dad's living center. So when I see Kit's name flash across the screen, my stomach flip-flops, but I swallow down my nerves and answer. So, you're one of those guys who calls instead of texts. I smile to myself. It seemed better than trying to sound sexy saying, Hello, or some shit like that. I guess I am. How are you doing, Emily? He asks me. He sounds like he is outside, the wind lopping against the speaker. I sit on the edge of my bed, shivering a little and just my towel. It's from the excitement running through my veins, making my chest and cheeks heat. I hate how he does this to me so easily, but there's no going back now. I'm okay, Kit. What have you been up to? I twirl my hair around my fingers and think I have fully lost it. Thinking about you? He chuckles. He is so effortless with the corny lines that it makes me laugh. Oh, really? Is that why you're calling me at 10 p.m.? I giggle. He chuckles. I didn't want to seem clingy, he reasons. Hmm, you're not clingy, at least not yet. What have you really been doing all day? Making trouble? I bite my lip. Oh, I don't have to make trouble. I am trouble. I laugh aloud, so loud it hits the walls. He laughs too, and I like how it sounds. His voice is deeper over the phone, and I lose myself in his intensity, even when I am not standing in front of him. Kit. Are you ever serious? I giggle again. Well, of course I am. He sighs and I hear him stop walking. He's panting a little bit, too. The sound reminds me of last night, the two of us panting and sweaty together. I was at the garage, then I had a meeting at the club with the guys. Do you guys have stale coffee and pastries at your meetings? I ask him. He laughs and I grin to myself. Nice one. And no, we don't. Pizza sometimes, but not stale coffee. I went for a run, and then I wanted to hear your voice. It would have been weird if I showed up at your house, he says. Yeah, and it would have reminded me not to have sex with strangers, I say. Mostly to myself, because that honestly could have happened too. But I didn't get a creepy vibe off of him. I didn't think he was scary or creepy at all. That it would. But what about you? What does Emily do all day? He chuckles. I smile to myself and roll over. My towel is too small to be lounging around in, but with his voice on the other end of the phone, I feel delightfully exposed. I slept and then ate. Now I'm talking to you. Oh, I showered before that, too. I bite my lip and then smile at his sudden silence, but still being able to hear his breath on the other end of the receiver. That's what you were doing when I called? Well, I got out first and towel-dried. I fiddled with the ends of my orange comforter and smile at where this is going. Fucking hell. I should have come to your house then. I laugh. It's not like I would tell him no sex until after the third date. We have already been there and back. But I am more excited to see him tomorrow, give myself a day or so to miss him. Maybe you should have. Why are you breathing like that? I finally ask him. I just ran two miles, he replies. Oh, God, I hate running, my giggle. Why is that? I hear him moving on the other end again. Because it isn't fun and my boobs are too big. Makes it uncomfortable. I think that's the only time your tits are a disadvantage, he laughs. I grin because I could tell that he was fond of them always gripping or sucking on them. 
At one point while he was asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night, he was gripping them. I could still feel his hands all over me, even now. Maybe so. I roll over to lay on my side and put him on speaker. I'm excited for our date tomorrow, I say. It's almost a whisper because I can't believe I am even saying it out loud. Me too, babe. I can't wait to see you again. I feel like last night was a dream. And this morning. Yeah, a vivid daydream, he chuckles. Well, us normal people have a bedtime, so I have to go. I sigh. If I don't hang up now, I honestly might invite him over. He could put me to sleep faster than a sleeping pill. Imagine I'm tucking you in, he says, his voice getting all breathy again. I will. Good night, Kit. I lick my lips and force myself to press the end call button. I sigh dramatically and lay back on the bed. With his voice still thrumming in my ear, my body is all keyed up, getting hot from the inside out. It makes me slide my hand into my towel, pressing it aside. I open my legs to the cold air and work my clit with my fingers, falling into an orgasm with his name on my lips. I fall asleep right there on my towel in the middle of the bed. When I wake up, I'm slightly confused until I remember what happened last night. Usually I wake up snuggled up in bed with my sensi blowing, but I forgot to turn it on. I get up and go through my morning routine, still going on the dreaded run I do a couple times a week. I get back and make a boring breakfast before I check my phone to see that Kit texted. Kit. Good morning, gorgeous. Emily. Hey, hottie. I am starting to think I am really bad at this, but he doesn't seem to have any complaints. We go back and forth for a while before he tells me that he has to get some work done before our date. I like how serious he is being. After I get some responsible stuff going, I talk to my dad for a while and tell him I found a mechanic to fix his car. I don't really tell him anything else because I don't want him to worry about me. The two of us are pretty close. I would tell him how much I liked a guy if it were any other time, but he's sick and I feel like I can't be selfish. It makes me sad to know that, but I pick myself up and stop feeling sorry about all this, turning my sights to getting ready. I haven't actively cared about what to wear in a long time, even when I went on dates back in college. We were just going to go to some chain restaurant and use a student coupon anyway. But this feels real. All he told me to do was dress casual, so I wear tight gray leggings and a pink shirt that hangs off my shoulder a bit and is kind of cropped. I do my hair, but only wear lip gloss as makeup. He made a comment about liking how I looked the next morning, so I am taking that to the full advantage. After lacing up my shoes, there is a knock at my door. I check, and it is right at six. I race down and swing it open, faced with a smiling kit. He has on faded jeans, lighter than blue, and a gray t-shirt that hugs at his chest. His leather jacket is on, and he looks absolutely incredible. His wind-blown hair completely fuckable looking, too. Hey, I smile and bite down on my lip. I step outside and get close to him on the porch. Hey there. He drags me into a toe-curling kiss. His hands come around my waist and grip me tightly. He drags me closer to his body so I am completely flush against him. I feel his cock resting against my navel when he deepens the kiss. His tongue swirls against mine and flicks against the lining of my lip. I wrap my arms around his neck and realize we are giving the neighbors a hell of a show. But I don't care. My body is singing for him. You look hot he says when he breaks the kiss. His voice is breathless, his lips pursed and glossed up from mine. I wipe at them and smile. Well, you look okay too, I giggle. I missed you. He takes my hands and leads me out to his bike. The heavy chrome and black sits at the end of my driveway and looks more dangerous than it is. But when I get on with him, I only feel safe. Excited. I wrap myself tightly to him, listening to his heartbeat against his back as he drives. His muscles clench and relax with the winding turns of the road. 
The straight path from my house to his comes up, and then he is just relaxed, completely in his element. I can tell this is what he loves to do. Be on his bike and enjoying the wind hitting us hard. The powerful engine thrumming underneath us. This is your house, Kit, I say when we arrive. If your idea of a date is getting naked, it needs a little work, I laugh. He grins and laughs too, taking my hand again. It's not. Well, maybe later. We're going to have dinner and a movie, but in the comforts of my house. You know, avoid the other annoying people, make our own snacks, he explains. That's original, I say, I'm actually happy about the idea. It takes the pressure off, and I love to be casual any time I can. Don't worry, you can dress up in something sexy for me later. Chapter 9. Kit I wasn't sure about this whole casual date idea until I saw how damn sexy Emily looked in those tights. The cute pink shirt she has on hanging off her shoulder, showing just a bit of skin. I thought she would be pissed I wasn't actually taking her out, like in public. But it's not like I'm avoiding the string of women I've been with in the city that could see us on a date and start a scene. I was clear with them about it only being a one-night type of thing. But the pressure of finding the perfect place and getting all dressed up just to do the same thing and get to know each other seems kind of redundant to me. I didn't know you were so creative. Emily comments as we walk in the kitchen. Her smile matches the glint in her blue eyes, shining in the center of my kitchen. It makes me happy to be around her, gives me this weird swell of emotion that I can only end with another grin at her. I have lots of surprises. She moves over to the stool and sits, dropping her purse next to it. Well, if you think I'm helping, you are incredibly mistaken, she giggles. I shake my head at her, but nod. Fair enough. I am the host, after all. I hope you're not allergic to anything. Me too, she sighs. I laugh and go over to the fridge, dropping a bottle of water in front of her. Amy doesn't like that I buy them, something about damaging the environment. But I don't like the taste of tap water, even with a filter. She kindly left the house for a while so I could enjoy my time with Emily and not feel bad about it. I'm sure she already noticed we had sex on the couch, but she hasn't said anything about it. Probably a moot point. I get started on the pretzel dough to bake first and plan on making the popcorn last. I don't even know what movie we'll watch, but I have a pretty nice collection to choose from. Having Emily here feels really natural, like we've been doing this for a long time or something. I think back to how the guys acted at the club about all this. I mean, I get their apprehension. I don't exactly have the best track record with this stuff, or any record at all. But I like Emily. I'm not really sure why yet, but I'll figure that out at some point. All I know is that it doesn't have to do only with how hot the sex is with her. Where did you learn to cook? She asks me. I put the pretzel dough on the counter and start kneading it. Um, here, in high school or around then, I answer. I glance over at her and see her giving me a funny look. What, men can't know how to cook? I chuckle. Well, no, of course they can. I'm just surprised about you is all, she jokes. Oh, burn, I laugh. Well, after my parents died, I had to learn how to do shit for myself. Couldn't have Amy becoming a mom to a teenager when she was still one herself. Now I cook better than she can. I brag to shake away the dampness of that statement. I don't necessarily talk about my parents dying, not after the mandatory counseling from the state before they let Amy and I stay together here, since she was 18. But Emily seems to understand and doesn't really ask questions about it. Well, that's nice of you, and unfortunate. I'm sorry. She gives me a sad smile that makes her look really caring and honest. She probably already has those qualities, naturally. Yeah. I shrug and start forming a pretzel. This I learned on a cooking channel, though. You don't remember your mom? I ask her. Wow, we're really getting into it, aren't we? She laughs once without humor and shifts on the chair. Her brows furrow and she stares at the granite counter like it has the answer. Um, not really. I was five when she left and she must not have been all that present before then, too. 
but she is out there somewhere. I just never bothered looking for her, she explains. I get that. Do you think you ever will? I ask her. I don't know why it is so easy to get into this stuff with her. Maybe we just understand each other on a deeper level, because we have been through the same kind of stuff. I don't think either of us know it yet, either. But there has to be a reason why she is the first girl out of dozens that I have connected with. I don't know, she sighs. I thought about it before my high school graduation, and then again for my college graduation. Maybe it will bother me before my wedding. She half laughs. I grin at her and shake my head. At least you didn't end up fucked up and blame it on her. Well, how do you know I'm not fucked up? She feigns, making a face. Cuz. I know. I shrug my shoulder. She smiles at me before curling her lips in, licking at her bottom lip. Suddenly, I don't give a fuck about this pretzel dough. I cross the space to her and draw her into a long kiss. My hands are messy, so I grip the counter behind her instead as her fingers go up into my hair. I deepen the kiss and suckle her bottom lip between mine, flicking my tongue across it. Her gloss tastes like vanilla and I inhale her scent deeply, letting it swarm into my brain as my tongue laps over hers. She moans into my mouth slightly and it goes right to my cock, making it twitch in my pants. I feel my piercing catch the material of my boxers and figure I need to slow this down before I hurt myself. She whimpers when I pull away. Occupational hazard. I dip my knees to loosen my cock from where it threatens to catch on my boxers. She giggles. When did you get that thing anyway, and why? She licks her lips and pulls away, smoothing my hair back. It's a long story. I walk back to my workstation and pan the pretzels, setting them in to bake. We have twelve minutes. She leans forward on the counter and it shows off the mound of her tits. It distracts the hell out of me, and I forget what we were even talking about. My budding erection reminds me, though. I had just joined the club and didn't want to get any tattoos. I don't have anything against them, but I wasn't keen on putting a bunch of ink on my body. The logo was already on our cut, and I didn't have anything else to commiserate. The other guys got tattoos. That meant something to them. Spencer and Rafe got one for being actual brothers, and once they had their girlfriends. Wouldn't that have hurt less? She giggles. I shake my head and get out the toppings for the popcorn. I rarely eat regular popcorn. If I do, it has to have chocolate and cheddar powder or caramel. Not really. Getting the piercing didn't hurt. What hurt was not being able to have sex or get hard for almost two months after. I smirk. She shakes her head at me in mock shame. How is that difficult? She sighs. I put the popcorn on the stove, since I make it from scratch, and set the timer. I'm a man, Emily. Morning wood and random erections don't just go away on their own. So how did you do it? She asks me. I wince at the memory. Of one time almost failing at keeping it away and thinking I would get my dick cut off or something. See, I had this football coach in high school. He was super big and hairy. Not a pretty sight. She giggles. You played football? Well, of course I did. I was the quarterback and team captain. It all sounds very cliche and much like a popularity contest, which it was, but that all ended after my parents died. I was a junior and didn't want to do anything more. I almost flunked out and consequently lost my place on the team. I was going to a dark place real fast, and one twist of fate ended me in Tank's path. When I graduated and needed a job, I started as a mechanic for the club before I was a prospect. Hmm. I bet you got all the ladies. I grin and stride over to her after I wash my hands. I stand by her on the chair and rest my hand on her thigh, the soft material of her tights slipping under my fingers before I grip her knee. That I did. But the satisfaction I got was temporary. And now you want something permanent? She looks up at me, her eyes widening. I find it hard to answer. Instead, I bite my lip as I look down at her and imagine I'm kissing her instead. I don't know yet. I exhale. I hope I'm not your guinea pig, she laughs. 
The ease in it makes me laugh, too, and I smile at her for a long time before I can even say anything. No, you're something else. I haven't decided yet. I lean in and kiss her cheek, trailing my lips down to her jaw. I drag her across the seat to straddle my waist with her legs. I love having her in this position when my cock is in the perfect place to rub against her. I relieve the friction and growl against her neck as I leave a deep hickey there. Kit, I can't have hickeys visible at work. She musters up between her moans. I chuckle and lean back. Where do you work, anyway? I ask her, realizing that I have no idea. She grins and drops her legs from around me. I'm a teacher for homeschooled kids up to second grade. It's very much professional environment, and their curious minds shouldn't know what hickeys are yet, she giggles. They've probably seen them on their parents already, I say, and she makes a face. What? At one point they'll need to know where they came from, I laugh. She swats at me, and the timer goes off then. I go get the pretzels out, and the popcorn has popped perfectly. It actually smells like a movie theater in here. So, what are we watching? Emily asks. We move to the living room, and I set the tray down as she looks over my entertainment system. I hope you don't have any adult films here, Kit, she scolds me over her shoulder. I laugh and pour her glass of wine. I just got a few beers for myself, but apparently that's not her thing. What would you do if I did? I sit back on the couch and let her pick something out. I don't know. Watch one together? She bends over to look at the bottom shelf and I nearly choke on my own air. Well, damn. I wish I had one now. I laugh. She turns and looks at me in confusion. What? I get a lot of pussy, Emily. I don't need the fake stuff, I say honestly. With my kind of contacts list in my phone, it's easier to get the real thing rather than scoff at the corniness I'm sure that those kinds of movies have. Fine, she stands up with her option. Not another teen movie it is, then. She hands it to me so I can put it in. It's kind of hard to figure out, since it's the most expensive movie on the market. But it's not like I'm the one that got it. The guys at the club used to pester me about the whole rich kid thing until they realized I don't capitalize on it that much. It's nice to get things easier, but I know that I don't need to. I've never even seen this, I comment as it starts. Emily laughs at me with a mouthful of pretzel. Seriously? It's so funny, she giggles. I look down at her, smiling at me, and then back to the TV. She is really damned cute. Her body laying against mine makes me feel like a fucking winner. I'm starting to get why she's authentic and can understand my pain without assuming. That's hard to come by. And she makes me not want to sleep with a bunch of girls just to fill some sort of a void. Around her, I don't really have one anymore. Chapter 10 Emily about halfway through the movie, I start sucking the cheese dip off my finger a little too dramatically. The past hour has been like a contest of who can turn the other one on the fastest. All Kit has to do is exist, though, so I am at a total disadvantage. In the last ten minutes, I finish my second glass of wine for more liquid courage or whatever. I didn't eat too much, so I wouldn't be stuffed, but it wasn't meant to be a full dinner anyway. The credits are rolling when Kit shifts underneath me, so his cock is pressing into the back of my ass. My back is laying against his chest, and his hands slide up my shirt, the warm calluses on his hands leaving goosebumps in their wake. Kit? I trail off, his hands close around my breasts over my lace bra. What? I let you finish the movie first. His lips trail over my ear his warm breath fanning down my neck and making me shiver. My body is so keyed up, I feel the tingle all the way down to my toes, stuffed under the blanket. He keeps massaging the mounds of my breasts, his fingers rolling around my nipple through the fabric, as his lips continue down my neck. Soon there is a sheen of sweat on my body from the heat. He tosses the blanket down on the couch and repositions us so I am underneath him. I widen my legs for him to lay against me and his cock rubs my thigh against my jeans. 
I can't get enough of you, Emily. It's fucking insane. He tugs my shirt and bra off at the same time, throwing them to the ground. My chest heaves at being exposed so soon, my nipples hardening to the cold air. He growls under his breath, his jaw tight and brows furrowed together. His full lips are pursed as his eyes rove over me. He takes my tights and panties off so fast I'm worried they might have ripped or something. Then he grabs my knees and spreads me open, holding me there. I gasp at the urgency of him, the way he handles my body. Kit, please, I moan. His lips trail kisses along the inside of my thighs on both sides and avoid my throbbing clit. I feel myself dripping for him, my entire body yearning for him. His eyes fleet up to me through his lashes as he smirks. In this light, they look more green than blue, his blonde hair darker than the desire in his eyes. I'm savoring this moment, Emily, he murmurs. I don't give a shit, I moan, shocked at how bad I need him. He just laughs in response and places an open, hot kiss on my clit and around my folds. His tongue laps up between them and then focuses on my clit as he kisses me harder there, like he would kiss any mouth. And then he focuses on my clit entirely, swirling it around in different patterns. Oh my God, please don't stop, Kit. Holy fuck. I grip the locks of his hair in my fingers and tug, clamping my thighs around him to hold him in place, too. He growls against me, and the sensation sends me into a deeper frenzy, one that continues on and grows in intensity. I am nearly blinded by it. The dim lights of the room turn dark as I can't see anything but Kit staring at me with those bright eyes of his. You're so damn beautiful when you came. I could watch you all day. He starts shedding his clothes. My hands slide down the planes of his chest and abs as he takes off his jeans, moving to get them off completely. Then he is standing in front of me, his cock on full display. He's as hard as ever, a thick vein throbbing down as if pointing to the silver glint of his piercing. I pump him in my hand and let my thumb toy with the piercing. His thumb circles my clit again, and I feel my body gearing up for more. He has to stop, though, to get the condom out of his jeans where he stashed it. I'm glad he is prepared. I sit up on the couch and straddle him when he rolls it on. Kit stares up into my eyes before I lean in and kiss him, swirling my tongue against his without any pause. His cock twitches underneath us and his hands move up my thighs until he reaches my ass where he squeezes. You're gorgeous, Emily. He kisses my neck and moves down between my breasts. You taste amazing, so soft and perfect. He moves his lips over to my breast where he kisses around my nipple and traces with his tongue. His fingers toy with the other, and soon my body is thrumming with more desire than it can handle. I grind myself against him, using his cock to rub around my clit until I am soaked for him again. Ride me, baby. I want you bouncing on my cock. He grips my ass again and pulls back to watch me sink onto him. The angle hits different. I feel like he is really inside me, deeper than I can handle. He lets me adjust. I, I feel him twitching inside me and his breath grows deeper and harder. I steady my hands against his chest as I start to circle my hips. I feel myself expanding around him as he seems to only grow harder. Kit, you feel incredible. Holy shit. I throw my head back, shutting my eyes as I surrender to the pleasure when I really get moving. I move up quickly and down slowly swirling my hips around, too. Even with the condom, I can feel his piercing hitting my walls, close to my G-spot. I pull out fully so I can feel it against my clit and then slide back down. He groans and grabs me so hard his hands will leave marks. He kisses my neck as my head is thrown back. I continue like that until I feel the orgasm building up inside me like a storm. My hard nipples tighten and my clit throbs around him. Kit circles it with his thumb and then kisses me, his lips wet and warm. 
I can taste myself on him, and it's fucking amazing the way our tastes mingle together. I start going so fast the pain meets pleasure, but I don't want to stop. It feels too damn good. Our bodies are nearly perfect for each other since they are so in tune. It's amazing how two strangers can be so good together. But I feel it. The way he kisses me and the way his tongue dances with mine. Our lips are seamless together and so are our bodies. I break the kiss when my breathing gets harder. Every inhale only brings more tightness to my chest as I feel myself exploding from the inside out. His cock grows inside me as I clench around him with my orgasm. It takes my whole body away and is more intense than the last one. Fuck, Emily. Kit wraps me in his arms and holds me close as he comes. I feel the heat of him pulsing and emptying into the condom inside me. I still tremble around him, my clit rubbing him from how deep we are. I roll my hips until the last tremor dies away and I can breathe somewhat normally. He kisses me hard and then collapses back on the couch, his arms falling like limp noodles. I giggle and lift off him, whimpering at the sudden loss. I still sit on his lap and lay against his chest, our moist bodies fitting together almost perfectly. That was incredible, I murmur. Hmm. I hear the smile in his voice and his hands slide down my back. It must have been better since we knew we wanted each other but held it off for so long. You up for dessert? he asks me. Depends on what it is. He chuckles and gets up to discard the condom, walking around in his naked glory. I put on his shirt and he comes back to put on his jeans. I follow him to the kitchen to wash my hands, smiling to myself at the way my knees wobble. Ice cream sundaes, my personal favorite, he bats his eyelids. I giggle at him and watch as he gets everything out. I was really impressed with the way he planned this, doing all the cooking himself, too. I can barely make spaghetti from scratch, and he made entire pretzels. I had way too many. In fact, any time I am around him, I find myself eating way too much. But this was better than going to some stuffy restaurant for a date paying too much just to talk to each other. As we watched the movie, he asked me random stuff, and it wasn't just to distract himself from mounting me right then and there. He actually seemed interested when he asked me about where I went to school and why I wanted to be a teacher. I gave him a bullshit answer, but that's just because the real one is kind of weird. I haven't even figured it out for myself yet, but I did the same to him. Finding out the only reason he didn't go to college was because he thought staying close to home would be good for him and his sister. And he didn't really need to, since he already knows how to be a mechanic. I find myself wondering what my dad would think of him. But it is way too soon for that. It's way too soon for us to be talking about most of the stuff we do, but I don't mind skipping the small talk. Either one is nice with him. I can tell that Kid is different than most guys that the whole man-whore thing was probably temporary. But I still don't want to feel like I can change him. That was never the plan. I think he is more changing me than the other way around. What kind of ice cream is this? It's amazing. I take a huge spoonful of the vanilla ice cream I topped with way too much chocolate syrup and chocolate chips. He chuckles. I don't know. Regular ice cream. He leans over the long side of the counter next to me and licks at his spoon. I watch his tongue like I haven't been personally affected by it. I had a nice time tonight. Very relaxing, I tell him. He smirks at me and I notice his slight dimple for the first time. His bright eyes bore into mine and I swell from the inside out. Me too, but our next date is going to be super legit. Can't have you thinking I'm some bum on house arrest, he laughs. I giggle and shake my head. I don't think that. Maybe you're a little crazy, but that's okay, I joke. He narrows his eyes in mock disapproval. You're the crazy one, with sex at least. I swat his shoulder. I am not. My cheeks heat because I know I am probably the most boring person in bed. I bet he has done a lot more than I have. You're the one with the metal up your dick. 
Sterling silver, he deadpans, I think. He adds, and we laugh together. But you're right. There are about a dozen things I can think of introducing you to. Like what? I ask, my voice going small. My nostrils flare with my heightened breathing. His stare grows darker, and I know nothing good can come of that look of his. Like... He lifts a spoonful of his half-melted ice cream. I don't know what his plan is until the cold liquid drops onto my thigh. Ah! I jerk back, but he grabs my knee and dips down, licking it up and off my thigh before it even hits the seat of the chair. He glances up at me and I half smile. Such a simple thing is hot as hell. I feel the sticky sugar of the ice cream and his warm saliva on me at the same time. More? he asks, his voice deep and rough. My shaky breathing is the only thing I hear in the air as I nod. He licks his lips and lifts my shirt up that I stole from him. My nipples are already hard to the cold area, and they throb at the exposure. He turns the chair, his muscles rippling as he moves me. I am completely naked in his kitchen, and his cock is making another entrance in his jeans. I like how giving me pleasure is such a turn-on to him. Other guys want to get it out of the way before they even get hard. For the record, you taste just as sweet without the ice cream. His deep voice thrums in the air as he drops another spoonful of ice cream on me. This time it falls over the swell of my breast and he lets it drip down my nipple before he licks it up again. My eyes literally roll back in my head, out of control, as my head falls back too. I trail my hands down the hard muscles of his arms until he moves to drop another on me. It falls down the center of my chest and he kisses up my stomach before licking it away. I had no idea this could be so enjoyable, being eaten off of. I want to do the same to him, but he seems to have other plans. He takes another spoonful, but he eats it this time, his eyes trained on me as his lips purse out and then he leans in to kiss me, the cold liquid spilling into my mouth. I jerk at the sudden cold feeling and then swallow it as it hits my throat before I kiss him back. In a haste, I undo his jeans and grab his cock, the hot flesh throbbing and growing harder in my hand. He rolls on another condom before I can even process it, and he is inside me in one hard thrust. Kit! I cry out in shock, not expecting to feel him so fast. He doesn't even let me adjust before he starts fucking me hard. My breasts bob between us as I lean back on the counter, my ass slipping on the chair. I have to rely on him to keep me from falling, which isn't that hard. He spreads my legs open, one thigh over his shoulder and the other stretched to the side. I look down at where we meet, where he disappears inside me and then pulls out over and over. Then I look at him and see his eyes blazing, his hair falling over his forehead as he drips with sweat. I moan out loud the whole time, saying a bunch of stuff I never pictured myself saying. Not so freely and assured, at least. My body is so keyed up I barely notice my orgasm. It's so silent and freeing that it overtakes me. I see literal stars in the bright lights of the ceiling as I collapse, spent. I let him handle my body until he finishes, buried deep inside me as he comes. So fucking good. He kisses across my collarbone and then up to my lips. I kiss him back greedily. I'm so hungry for him it would be impossible to avoid it. Our bodies connect the same way our minds do, like we just get each other. I kiss him as long as possible before my mouth actually hurts and I can't breathe. I wish I could stay here all night with you, I exhale. He chuckles and leans back, his cock slipping out of me. Why can't you? I have to go to work. Like a normal person, I giggle. He shakes his head like he doesn't approve. Fuck. Can't the kids teach themselves? He kisses my cheek and inhales my hair falling over my face. Nope, I laugh. He groans and pulls himself away from me. Fine. At least let me get you cleaned up. His eyes glint with mischief and I know that he means he just wants to have shower sex too. 
Either one is fine with me. Chapter 11 Emily I can hardly get out of bed the next morning. Mondays are always hard, but it's worse when you spent the night before having sex for hours. My body is sore and tired, like I ran ten miles or something. Still, for the sake of adulthood, I force myself up and to the bathroom, taking care of my morning routine before I traipse around for breakfast. It ends up being oatmeal as I plan things out for the day. Most of the time I have lesson plans written out for the duration of the year, but these kids are a bit different since they aren't the same age and I don't want the lesson to be too universal. Plus, their parents are very specific. It happens a lot with homeschool kids. I mean, they are being homeschooled for a reason. Anyway, I like to be prepared before I go, so I finish that and start getting ready. My shower makes me think about Kit. For obvious reasons. Last night was amazing, and I'm glad that he did all that for me. Now I know that it isn't just the sex that's great. It's him. His quick wit and sense of humor. And he is also smart in his own way, too. I guess it helps that he is drop-dead gorgeous, but that isn't the only attribute that he has. I can tell that he likes me, and of course I like him too, but I'm still worried that this might be a phase for him. The whole one-woman-only thing. I'm worried that it won't last as long as I want it to. I put on jeans and a plain blue t-shirt before I tie my hair up, do some light makeup, and head out. The first house I go to is farther out, and the others are closer to home, which is nice at the end of a long day. I talk to my dad's nurse on the way, and she updates me on how he is doing. He isn't getting better, but he isn't getting worse, so I am choosing my battles right now. It was only two years ago that he got sick, and the start of this year that I had to get him into the care facility, but time changes so quickly I can only guess what is next. You're late. I'm early. I half frown at the mom of the kid whose house I just got to. They don't give me keys or anything, so I have to knock and be let in. She makes a confused face and then purses her red lipstick lips. Oh, right. I was thinking of the housekeeper. She turns and shuffles away on her heels, and I follow inside with a frown. The parents are much harder than the kids, for sure. I feel bad for this one because his mom is such a bitch. It makes me think of what might have happened if my mom had stuck around. She probably would have just made my life harder, moping around about how much she didn't want to be a mom. Dad didn't tell me much about her or how they met, and I know it is hard for him to talk about it, but sometimes I wish I had answers. Finish this up. I'll go make your snack. I go off to the kitchen and start warming up pizza rolls when my phone buzzes in my pocket. I check it and smile to see a text from Kit. Kit. Hey, beautiful. What are you doing? Emily. Working. I smirk and lean against the counter. I plan on using this five-minute break to its full effect. The math problem I left should take at least that long. Kit. Teach me, hot teacher. Emily. What do you want to learn? Kit. All of your pleasure spots. I laugh aloud and think he is absolutely insane. Luckily, I am far from the office where the dad works from home in. Emily. That would take a while. Kit. I've got nothing better to do. I want to see you tonight. I think he is just exaggerating before I notice he doesn't really do that. I thought most people early on don't see each other two days in a row, but Kit seems to be defying that norm. Emily. Okay. Kit. I'll come pick you up around five. I have something I want to show you. Emily. Please tell me that something isn't your penis. I giggle to myself, and he sends back multiple smiley faces and an eggplant. Kit. Can't promise that it's not. I grin and put my phone away right when the microwave goes off. Suddenly, I need this day to go as fast as possible. I think I drive over the speed limit the entire way home because I'm so anxious. Kit doesn't make me nervous since I am so comfortable around him, but he is unpredictable, so that makes me anxious as hell. I have enough time to freshen up and change into shorts before I hear him knock on the front door. 
I wonder why he didn't just ring the doorbell. Hey, I smile after swinging the door open. He grins and I step outside, noting how he peers in the door. It's not that I don't want him in the house, I just haven't ever had anyone in there. Hey, yourself. He looks hot as ever in faded jeans and a white t-shirt. It wraps his muscles and contrasts his tanned skin perfectly. His blonde hair is wind-whipped and finger-combed back like it usually is. My mouth actually waters at how irresistible he is. I like the shorts. He steps forward, swarming me with his scent. I giggle as his fingers slide under the hem of the shorts that stop just under my ass. Their warmth catches on me and he grips me tightly and pulls me close, both his hands high up on my thighs. It's hot today, I murmur. He grins and leans down to kiss me. I'm lucky I don't have nosy neighbors that can see us kissing right on my front porch. His tongue swipes over my bottom lip and he sucks harder. My head tilts back as the kiss deepens and my body floods with desire for him. He makes me feel so damn good it should be illegal, yet here he is. I twist my fingers up in his hair to hold him close to me, swiping my tongue over his too. I taste the mint of his breath and it tingles up against me. His body is so muscled and hard, pressed up against me. I feel his cock poke against my thing and moan against him as the kiss goes on until I lose air. We won't make it out of here if you keep kissing me like that, baby. Kit growls against me, panting the same air with me. You kissed me, I giggle. I open my eyes and look deep into his, relishing how good his gaze makes me feel. Fair enough. He licks his lips and pulls away but keeps his hands on my waist. I hope you're hungry. He grabs my hand and tugs me along to where his bike is parked at the end of the driveway. Starving. I put my helmet on and he still has to help me buckle it. That thing is tricky. And then I get on behind him and love every second of hanging on to him tightly. I don't know why it is so easy to be wrapped up in him, literally. The steady beat of his heart against my cheek and his simple breathing relax me the way nothing ever has before. Everything that goes on in my life that's unfair or hard just goes away when I am with him, and it's just us. I don't want it to hurt if we break up, but I already know that it will, if we make it that far. Those thoughts get shoved from my mind when he stops in front of an old-fashioned looking diner. It has bright red lights and clear glass windows that show the big booths inside. This looks like it's from a movie, I grin. Maybe it is. I used to come here a lot, he says. I follow him in and the male host leads us to our table, a circular booth facing the wall of televisions by the bar. I scoot in close to him and he rubs his thigh against mine on purpose. My bare legs are exposed and that heightens the sensation. What did you do all day? I ask him as I scan the menu. I feel him staring at me and he doesn't even look at the menu. Um, not much. Worked out. Got some shit done at the club. His deep voice rumbles in the small space around us. Sounds fun, I lie. He smirks at me and half turns in the chair. He props his elbow up behind us and twinkles his eyes at me. What were you doing? You know what I was doing, I giggle. I was teaching. He licks his lips and trails his eyes down my body. There is nothing that exciting since I wore a t-shirt and jeans. His hand has busied itself with my thigh, though, his palm burning a trail of fire up and down, over my knee and back up again. If I had a teacher as sexy as you, I'd never be paying attention. I'm lucky I don't teach high school then, I laugh once. Or that you don't have one of those long rulers to spank me with. I laugh again. I didn't take you for the spanking type. He licks his lips and grins down at me. I guess we'll have to find out. Before I can respond to that tantalizing argument, the server interrupts us. She eyes Kit the whole time and that explains why she interrupted our near kissing moment. I ignore that bout of jealousy and order my food, a burger and mozzarella sticks, and fries. 
I skipped lunch because I was so busy. If I ate like that, I'd still be fat, Kit says after he orders his steak and fries and the server leaves. You were fat? I giggle once. He tilts his head and half rolls his eyes, probably at revealing that fact about him by accident, I'm assuming. He fishes his phone out of his pocket and my gaze droops to his crotch. Force of habit, I assume. After some scrolling, he shows me a picture of himself, at least five years younger and fifty pounds heavier. That's not fat, maybe just chubby. I take the phone and zoom in on his chubby cheeks. It explains the dimple he gets when he smiles. Well, the school didn't think so. He takes it back and feigns a frown. I laugh at his cute expression but feel bad for him inside. High school can be no fun sometimes. Sorry about that. I hug him from the side and kiss his cheek. He flashes a wolfish grin and hugs his arm around me. That's okay. I joined the football team the next year and I've been hot ever since, he sighs. Well, I'd date you even if you didn't have washboard abs. I slide my hand down his stomach and he groans under his teeth. Glad to hear that. He kisses my cheek and then dusts his lips over mine in a chaste kiss. I'm glad we're spending time together, he says. I lick my lips and nod. Me too. We sit like that as we watch the soundless televisions, exchanging small conversation. It's mostly endless flirting, but it occupies me until the food comes and I don't even feel weird about eating like a pig in front of him. He just laughs when I get burger sauce all over my mouth. It's like we're friends who are also attracted to each other, which makes things easier. What is this thing you wanted to show me? I ask when we are halfway through the meal. He chuckles. I already told you. I roll my eyes at him. Kit! I have seen his penis numerous times. It isn't worthy of a surprise anymore. Can't you be patient and wait for the surprise? He feigns exasperation and keeps eating. I chew on a mozzarella stick and give up. I guess I'll just have to wait. Chapter 12 Kit I stare at Emily like I've never seen a woman before. I feel like I do that often, but with her it's like I forgot someone could be as amazing as her every time. She's got burger sauce on her mouth again, but I leave it this time because it's funny to look at. She's so damn cute and sexy at the same time, I don't know which way to feel. All I know is that she makes me happy, and it isn't a temporary feeling. You want dessert? I ask her. No, I'm watching my weight. She leans back after wiping both her plates clean. I laugh at her and find it refreshing that she isn't only eating green shit with no dressing. I may spend very little time with women outside of the bedroom, but I have tried the actual date thing. I got tired of them watching me eat after their mini salad was gone. It's not like I only went after those kinds of women either. There were some wholesome ones mixed in there. But it was still the same thing. Like they didn't want me to see all of them. Emily lets me see all of her and doesn't apologize for it. Yeah, right. When the server comes back, I order us a sundae. She gives me a funny look, and I guess it's because I'm ignoring everything else that's going on in the room. Nothing could take my attention away from Emily. I'm going to get fat if you keep treating me to all this food, she sighs and slurps at her iced tea. I snicker. You can come to the gym with me if you're so worried. Not like I would care either way. I squeeze her thigh and lean in to kiss her cheek. No way. I bet you work out like a maniac. How else would you look like that? She giggles. I smile at her and press my lips to her cheek again. Her skin is so soft and she smells like a human candy drop. I can't get enough of her. I thought about her all day, too. That's true, but we can get hot and sweaty in other ways. I slip her hair back over her shoulder and trail my lips up her neck, nibbling at the skin under her ear. I try not to leave a hickey, though. I don't want to mess up her work professionalism or whatever. Mmm. She leans her neck back and then gasps, pulling away. I look up to see it's because the server came back with our Sunday. 
You don't need to be embarrassed. She's been imagining doing that to me since we sat down. I laugh. Emily giggles and shakes her head, dipping her spoon into the ice cream. I didn't think you noticed. She murmurs. I eat a spoonful and wince at the cold. I always notice, but I've only got eyes for you. I wink at her. She looks at me like she doesn't believe me and then takes another spoonful. Why? she asks in a curious tone. I chuckle. Because I like you. I think you're amazing and gorgeous. What if I had moles? I laugh. <laughs> I'd take you to a dermatologist. My sister works at a really good clinic. I grin at her and she laughs softly. Oh my God, that's not what I meant. Do you feel like you don't get male attention easily? I ask her. Not that I even want other guys looking at her. We eat more ice cream and she avoids answering. I don't think so. In college, it was more like a rite of passage if you were at a party and felt like you had to go home with someone. Well, you're not just anyone, Emily. In fact, all I wanted to do was go home alone until you showed up. I, I want this to be a real thing with you, I say honestly. She looks up at me with her big blue eyes open and staring wide at me. Me too. She smirks and goes back to eating. I half watch her out of the corner of my eye and then decide I've had enough. Does the ice cream bring back any memories for you? I ask her. I drink water and then lean in closer to her, burying my nose in her hair and then trailing along to her jaw. Her breath catches before she releases it all at once. Maybe, she giggles. I pull back and grin at her. I grab her thigh with my left hand and lean the other over to trap her in the space, hovering over her. I don't think I'll ever eat ice cream normally again, but I know I want to eat some other stuff off you. I lick my lips and smile at her. Her cheeks flush darker and she rubs her thighs together. She grabs my forearm and her nails dig into my skin. Like what? She says, breathless. Her soft voice goes right down to my cock and I groan under my breath. I've been half hard this entire time and my cock doesn't want to wait any longer. Like... I run my finger up her thigh and let my hand rest against her, feeling the heat from between her thighs. Chocolate syrup, maybe caramel, and whipped cream. I could be very creative with whipped cream. I bite my lip, my eyes fluttering closed as I imagine eating off her bare pussy. She whimpers and shifts in the seat, gripping my hand harder. Kit, she starts. I chuckle and lean back. Let's get out of here. I break a couple of traffic laws on the drive, but I don't really care. Not when I feel Emily's body against me. Her breast pulls up against my back, shifting with every turn of the bike. I get to the club and park the bike out by the garage. What are we doing here? Emily asks. I take her hand and keep the surprise alive as I walk into the garage, shutting the door behind me so no one interrupts us. I cut the lights on and she gasps when she sees it. Oh my God, kid! She turns to me, smiling so wide I can barely breathe. She looks so beautiful, her smile gleaming in the shitty lighting, but somehow... She still looks amazing. You like it? I walk over to her Chevy. I worked the past few days and all of today to get it ready once the parts came in. Then I gave it a new coat of paint so it's sleek and the chrome is still shiny. I love it. It's never looked this good. She walks around it, trailing her fingers across the dips and curves of the car. I stuff my hands in my pockets as I follow her. It needed a new transmission and oil tank, that's why it couldn't run for very long. But it should be good to go now for a couple more years. Then it might need a new engine, I tell her. Kit, this is perfect. Thank you. She skips over to me and hugs me. I hug her back and lift her up, swinging her around and leaning her against the hood. Well, I'm glad you like it, I chuckle, holding her waist. She pulls back to look at me and smiles. I love it. This means so much to me. You have no idea. She leans in and kisses me. 
I let her take control as she coaxes my lips apart slowly, trailing her tongue across my bottom lip before her tongue swirls with mine. She tastes like the salt of her dinner and the mint she took after, kissing me deeper and harder with every passing second. I grind my cock against her as it grows harder. No point in keeping it at bay now. How much do I owe you? She breaks the kiss and leans back. I frown at her and lick my lips, tasting her gloss. Nothing. She shakes her head and slips her hands from around my neck to down my chest. Kit, I can't let you do this for free. Her voice softens as her blue eyes grow brighter. I wanted to do something nice for you, Emily. I get the sense that people don't very often, I tell her. She purses her lips and leans down on her toes and back against the car. She lifts up her legs and straddles me, pulling me in close with her legs around my hips. I trail my hands down her soft, bare skin, cupping the side of her ass. Thank you, Kit. She whispers and her eyes water. She blinks it back and then smiles softly at me. You're welcome. I lean in and kiss her cheek, trailing my lips over to hers as I brush them against her. Her breath fans across me before I kiss her, slow and deep. I feel her lips sinking with mine with each passing second, and I don't think I will ever know what it is like to not feel her against my lips, even when she isn't here. I want to know everything about her, everything that keeps her up at night and makes her happy. I want some of that to be me, too, and I don't want to mess that up for anything. So, I kiss her and wish that I could tell her how much she means to me that way. Instead, I kiss her as long as I can before I need air, and then I trail kisses down her jaw until I reach her collarbone. I lift up her shirt and run my hands up her chest to cup her breast, then she moans aloud. Kit, she breathes. Her fingers tighten in my hair, and then she trails them down over my shoulders, tugging at my shirt. I want you so bad, baby, so fucking bad. I growl and undo the button of her shorts, tugging them down with her panties at the same time. Her pussy is wet and glistening for me. I trail my fingers up her thigh and rub against her clit, watching her buck against the hood. Oh, fuck. She leans back, her hands beside her as she folds herself up. I lick my lips and get down to my knees, opening her thighs to me. I place wet kisses along the inside of her thighs until I get to her, inhaling her sweet scent before I dive in. My tongue runs over her folds and clit as I tease her before I focus on her hard, throbbing nub. Don't stop. Please, Kit. She clutches my hair and falls against the hood, claiming my face into her thighs. She tastes so fucking good. I soak all of her up before she comes and then relish feeling her against me as she comes. The way she tastes drives me insane. Your taste, so fucking perfect, baby. I kiss back up her body and take her shirt off, her pale skin shining in the light. I need you, Kit. She moans, her eyes are hazy and bright, drawing me into her. I separate from her only to take my shirt off, and then I lift her up again, moving her to the empty work table. It's cold, she giggles, when I set her bare ass down. I laugh at her and shake my head. Won't be for long. I undo my jeans and grab my cock, finding my condom to open and roll on. She watches as I do that, and then I slide myself against her right at the tip. Her body shivers and she gasps, looking into my eyes. The connection I feel with her is so deep, so real that I feel it in my chest. It takes my breath away when I can hardly breathe. Kit. Please, she begs me, bucking her hips toward me. I grin and start sliding inside her, feeling her expand around my cock. She's still so fucking tight it blows my mind. Her nipples poke through the thin lace bra she has on, and I tug that down to release her full breasts. Rose pink nipples pucker out to me, and I lean down to take one in my mouth, pinching the other. 
She grabs my hair so tight it pricks my scalp, and I continue until I'm deep inside her. Lean back, baby, I tell her. She kisses me first and then lays herself against the table. Her back arches when I pull out and press into her again. My piercing pinches right at my tip under the rim. It makes my knees buckle as I go faster. But I don't go too fast because I want this to feel slow and controlled as I memorize her body and the way it feels against me. I watch her breast bob and skin flush as she grows closer. Her nails grip the end of the counter as she cries out. I take her hand in mine, lacing my fingers with hers as the other grips her thigh to hold her open. Our bodies get slick with sweat and our moans and pants fill the air. I feel myself right on the edge, but I wait for her, drawing deeper inside her each time. I'm coming, Kit. Don't fucking stop. She cries out, her voice growing breathless at the end as her body trembles and she grips my cock even tighter. It makes me grow harder inside her and I keep going, leaning forward to kiss her as I come. She wraps her arms around me and kisses me as I empty my cock in her, wishing I could feel her with nothing in the way. I thrust into her until the last of me is out and then I collapse against her. She holds me tight and runs her fingertips down my back and over my ass. I start humming against her until I can get up, completely spent but somehow still want more of her. That was fucking hot. I kiss the corner of her mouth and separate from her. I discard the condom and then pull my pants back up. Uh-huh, Emily says. She looks dazed as hell and I laugh at her but help her find the rest of her clothes, too. We get cleaned up and I open the garage door so the breeze can cool us off. I sit on the hood of the car with her. She sits between my legs with her head against my chest. I lean down and kiss the top of her head, sometimes just to inhale her scent even more. My dad wants me to sell the car, but I don't think I can, she says after a while. Why? I ask her. She sighs and runs her nails across my bent knee. He's sick. He wants me to use the money to help pay for his care, but he loves this car. It would hurt too much to sell it, she explains. I feel for her and how upset she sounds. If my parents had been sick and then died, it would have hurt a lot more than them dying in that accident. Too much time to imagine them dying before they passed away, thinking about what to do with all their stuff. It's upsetting. How sick is he? I ask her. It varies, she sighs. He wasn't that bad at first, but MS is rapidly progressive, and they don't really have a blanket treatment for it. I had to put him in a center that can handle around-the-clock care. It's expensive, but I make it work, she says. I kiss the side of her cheek, and she takes a deep breath. I'm sorry you have to go through all that, I tell her. Yeah, I'm doing fine, but if I sell the car, it's like I'm starting to get rid of pieces of him. I think he just feels bad for me being the only one there. It's not like my mom would do much good if she was here. She half laughs. I know. So, you don't sell it. Keep it for him when he gets better. It's not like you're holding on to false hope, I tell her. I know she may feel like she is holding on to it, like she is holding on to the hope of him getting better. But that doesn't mean she has to sell his stuff. It sounds like she has it figured out, though. Yeah, that wouldn't do much good. I'm not very good at driving a stick shift, but he taught me when I was little. He used to collect cars and sell them. That's really cool. Must have been nice growing up. Yeah, my first car was a 67 Corvette before he sold it off. Then I just used whatever he had laying around. She giggles. I smile and hold her tighter. She tells me more stories and some stuff she did growing up, but when she turns it back to me, I try to avoid it at all costs. Kit, why don't you like talking about them? She turns to me. Her lips are still a bit swollen from before, and I just stare at her for a hot second before I even register what she said. It's not that I miss them. I guess I just don't have that many memories anyway. Amy and I are so close because we were all we had growing up, I answer. 
She frowns at me and then reaches up to cup my face, sliding her fingers back into my hair. I'm sorry. I thought having two parents was better than one. I guess not. She half smiles. I nod. Yeah, not necessarily. They were just working all the time. I had a lot of lonely times growing up, and I guess that when they died, the fact that I never got to tell them that left me angry and unresolved. When I found the club, I found people that had their own story but looked out for each other anyway. Amy didn't like it at first, but once she saw what it did for me, she backed off. Are you going to take over the company one day? She asks me. I chuckle and shake my head. I don't know. Maybe when I'm 40, I joke. You don't have to, not if you don't want to. You don't think it makes me a bad man if I don't, if I run away from my responsibilities? It's not running if it's what's good for you, she tells me. I smile at her because I've never had anyone tell me something that actually helps. I've felt like I avoid my duty to the family every time I avoid working for the company. But she doesn't make me feel that way at all. Emily, you're amazing. I smile at her and then lean in to kiss her. She giggles and wraps her arms around my shoulders to hold herself close to me. So are you, Kit. She kisses me and I kiss her back. For a long time, actually, we sit there kissing and talking until the sun is far past down, and it feels like we are the only people that exist in the world. It feels scary as hell, but she is starting to become my world. Chapter 13 Emily A few weeks later He's doing great. We have walks every day for about 30 minutes, and he's eating well, too. I smile at my dad's nurse like I've never heard better words before. When it comes to him, I have not in a long time. That's great. So he might still be here for a while, though? I ask. I don't really want my dad's last days to be in this place whenever they might come. It's hard to say, unfortunately. You know how unpredictable it is. But as long as he keeps responding to the meds, it looks good. Okay, thanks. I finish up my meeting with her and then head over to see my dad. Their offices are in the same building, but when he has visits and stuff, I like to get a progress update with the doctor and the nurses. I tell him about the car getting fixed up, and he's really happy about it. He reminds me to try and sell it again, but I decline. I only take the list of buyers he has because I want him to still feel like I listen to him as my dad. I know he doesn't like feeling like a patient in front of me. He's always been really virile and strong, an active father that was always there for me, and now he can only take 30-minute walks every day. I can't imagine how that feels. But I bite the bullet and tell him about Kit, too. To no surprise, he asks a bunch of questions and says he doesn't know if he's good enough for me. But it's not hard to convince him that he is. Apparently, I'm beaming when I talk about him. After dinner, I head over to see Kit, speaking of. He told me to come by the club, and I have no idea why. We talk every day. Over the past few weeks, we don't see each other every day. But he does call, and we text throughout the day, too. It's been maybe two months since we have actually been together, and it is damn near perfect. I don't want to jinx it, but it really is. Kid is really attentive and sweet, even when he's cocky. He is also still a hot-as-sin man. My feelings for him grow stronger, and I wait for the other shoe to drop, but there doesn't seem to be one, at least not yet. I have even had dinner with him and his sister. She's nice to me and doesn't treat me like one of the other girls he has been with, but apparently they have never met her, so I feel... official. We haven't made it official yet, but I know that he wants to. I said I wanted to move slowly, just so I don't dive into things too fast. I wasn't looking for a relationship when I met him, so it's all coming as a surprise. But I do like him. A lot. I walk inside the club to loud music playing and the pool table balls hitting each other. The lighting is dim and the place is half full. I haven't been inside since that first night we got a drink together. I spot him by the bar, his head of blonde hair shining under the lights. What's a girl got to do to get a drink around here? 
I wrap my arms around his muscular frame. He turns and grins at me. It's actually been two days since I have seen him, since I had to prep for the kid's exams, and then I spent the night with my dad since his doctor's appointment was so early. Give a guy a kiss. He grips my waist and leans down to kiss me, swirling his tongue around mine right away. He releases me too soon, and I'm dizzy on my feet. It's gotten a bit cooler outside, so I'm in a sweater and jeans most nights. His leather jacket hugs his muscles and offsets the blonde of his hair. I hold this handsome man for a while before we separate. I missed you. He kisses my cheek by my ear. I suppose he likes that spot so much because I spray my perfume near there, which he has already said he really likes. I missed you too, I tell him. A few moments later, the bartender drops off his drink. I recognize him from last time. And the cocktail-looking thing for me looks familiar, too. I sip at it and relax for the first time all day. Why did you want me to meet you here? I ask Kit. He smiles and turns to me, takes a swig of his beer before he answers. So you could meet my friends, he says. I giggle. You have friends? I ask, joking with him. He cocks his head and gives me a funny look. Well, of course I do. It's you that doesn't like people. He licks his lips. Just then, two guys come over from the other side of the bar and wave at him. One is huge, with dark hair and a mean-looking face. He honestly looks like he'd bash your head in and then leave you for dead. The other is a regular guy, but also muscular and dark-haired. This is Rafe and Beast, Kit says. I giggle. Are those real names? They all laugh, and I shake their hands. They sit on the bar stools around our table and greet Kit. Nope, we're running from the law. The bigger one, Beast, which is kind of fitting, says to me. Well, don't tell her that. She already doesn't believe me when I say we're not criminals, Kit laughs. We're not criminals, Rafe says. Okay, I sort of believe you, I say. I wish he told me I was meeting his friends. I'd try to look hotter to make them jealous of him. It's what any good girlfriend would do. I'm Emily, by the way, I say, remembering Kit didn't tell them. Oh, we know. We've heard plenty about you, Beast chuckles. His voice is so deep it sounds like a bomb went off in there. I swallow and look at Kit, who just shrugs. If I had people to brag to about him, I would have done the same thing but I never imagined he would do that for me. I guess it is still hard for me to believe that he likes me that way. Oh. Good stuff only, promise, Rafe says. I smile and Kit takes my hand, sitting closer to me. I like being introduced to this part of his life I have only heard of in passing. It makes me excited for everything else. But I want time alone with him. It has been a long two days. So you're a teacher. Isn't that pretty stressful? Beast asks me. I smile and shake my head. Not really. I teach homeschool kids, so I have it easier. The dads don't hit on you? Beast laughs, and I see Kit frown. It makes me giggle, despite that being my constant worry. No, I guess I've gotten lucky in that regard, so I snicker. After talking with them for a while, I have a beer to Kit's surprise and learn a little about them, too. Darius, also known as Beast, is single. It doesn't surprise me much, considering he looks like he could kill you in your sleep. I doubt he would, though. Rafe has a wife who is also a lawyer. That might be pretty convenient, considering their club might get into a little trouble sometimes, I think, but he really lights up when he talks about her. Looks less like a dangerous biker. Spencer comes over after a bit, and I get to know him, too. Apparently, Logan is at home with his baby boy and wife, which I think is absolutely adorable. I don't like kids all that much, but babies I could spend all day with. Of course, I like the kids I work for, but it's different when they are in groups. They're dangerous in groups, honestly. You getting tired? Kit leans down and whispers in my ear. We moved to the pool table and I had no idea how to play, but it was fun to watch them place bets and lose. I'm okay, I say. He looks like he's having fun with his friends, and I don't want to be the one to make him leave. 
I don't know much about the girlfriend thing. I never had to make it that far when I was stuck in college dating culture. Kit hasn't said anything officially, and I don't know how to ask him either. You sure? He checked. Just then Rafe whistled that it was his turn. I took the opportunity to take a break from all the socializing and looked for the bathroom. I don't know why I suspected the place to be beat up or something. Maybe it fit the vibe. But it's actually pretty clean, even the ladies' room. I'm alone when I go in the stall, but when I come out, there's this blonde woman standing there with a snide look on her face. I half smile at her to be nice, but once I start washing my hands, it doesn't seem to be a friendly or simple encounter. You're here with Kit, she states. I wipe my hands and turn to face her. I am. She's a bit taller than me and has one of those flawless, pretty faces, slender body and cold brown eyes. I swallow hard but stand my ground, even though she is looking at me like she wishes I would melt. Well, that's surprising. You're not his usual type. I laugh once without humor and sling my purse over my shoulder. And I guess you think you are? I step around her, but she follows me. He's just going to forget about you soon. That's what he always does. I'm only warning you, she says, like she is pretending to be nice, but knows she is only doing it to try and take a jab at me. I never did the whole jealous ex-girlfriend thing very well, and I don't even know if she was. Kit often said that he didn't do the relationship thing until me. And while that isn't really what I want, to see if I can change him, it's what happened. I take the confidence his attention gives me and the fact that he even brought me here to this place to face this horrible woman. How long do you think, just so I can prepare myself? I cross my arms and try to look concerned. Two weeks at the most, she purses her lips. I guess it's coming up to that pretty soon, huh? She tilts her head at me like she isn't surveying me this whole time. Hmm, maybe... If we hadn't been together for two months already, I say back, and I didn't expect it to feel so good when her whole facade faded away. But I feel bad when the jealousy in her eyes fades to sadness. I want to not be mad at Kit. He said he was honest with them, but it sucks that he's hurt people like this, even for them to want to go after other people in bathrooms. Look, I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. But you don't have to do this to other girls just to try and feel better. I sigh and walk over to the door, taking a deep breath before I swing it open and am faced with the hot air and leather smell of the club. I walk back on shaky feet to Kit, laughing with his friends by the pool table. I force a smile when he sees me and go back over to them, trying to engage with the conversation again. Honestly, whoever that woman was really got to me. If being with Kit means coming here and being mean-girled in the bathroom, I have a lot coming to me. But he really doesn't seem like the kind of guy to hurt people intentionally. It's the only thing that keeps me from being mad at him. I've got better things to do than beat you all. Kit drops his pool stick and grins. You've got beginner's luck is all, Rafe chuckles. Kit walks over to me and grabs my waist, pulling me in closer to him. You ready? He asks me. Yeah, if you are, I lie. I've been ready, honestly, I giggle. He chuckles at me and kisses my cheek before we say goodnight to everyone. We leave on his bike and are headed for his house. I'm glad that it's Friday so I can spend more time with him. After I got the Chevy home and whatnot, I had been back and forth with my own car. I couldn't bring myself to drive it. I wasn't worried it would give out again, but I almost want the first time I drive it to be with Dad just hoping that his improvements last for a while. Being close to Kit right now helps me, though. His steady heartbeat is therapeutic to me. I'm almost disappointed when we get to his house and he parks his bike. You okay? He asks as he helps unbuckle my helmet. I should figure it out one of these days, but it's nice when he does it. I stare up into his eyes, and instead of nodding, I shake my head slightly. The cool air has a slight breeze around us, and I take comfort in his scent surrounding me. He cups my face and traces my cheekbones with his thumbs. I ran into this girl in the bathroom. It seemed like she knew you, I say softly. 
His face falls, but he holds me tighter as his brows furrow. What did she say? he asks. I sigh and swallow back the lump in my throat that wants to keep me from even talking about it. That... You'll get tired of me soon, pretty much. I'm guessing the same thing happened to her. I watch his eyes go dark and his hands drop from my face to my arms. You don't believe her, do you? He asks like he is shocked I would even consider it. I guess I am, too. I don't want to, but... It's not like I know right now. It's only been two months. Just because you introduced me to your friends as your girlfriend doesn't make it real, I whisper. He shakes his head and sighs, a grunt of disapproval leaving his throat. It's real, baby. I thought you knew that. I know I didn't tell you before, but I've thought of you as my girlfriend for a while now. I never did that with anyone else. Yeah, I know. Hence what the girl was saying. Don't use big words with me, teacher. He laughs once. I laugh too, but it is stifled by the weight of the moment. Do you know who she was? I ask him. His grin falls to a blank expression as he blinks. Can't say I do, not without seeing her. She said I'm not your usual type. I cross my arms. His hands leave me as he realizes this isn't a short conversation to be fixed by his charms. That's not... Don't listen to anything she said, Emily. I mean, I'm sorry that she was hurt enough to go after you like that, but I was always very clear with other women, and I'm being clear with you too. Except this time, I'm being clear about keeping you and not letting you go. Kit steps forward and his voice seeps with honesty. I drop my shoulders and take a deep breath. Everything she said is very fresh and I want to take it as a jealous girl talking. But I can't shake the feeling that could be me one day. I don't think I'd ever do that to someone, but maybe she didn't think that before meeting Kit either. Okay, I guess it just bothered me, I murmur. Kit smiles and tilts my chin up, so I look him in the eyes. I know. I'm sorry about that. But it's only you, Emily, I swear. He kisses my cheek and then my lips with a closed mouth. It's short-lived and I lean into him when he pulls away. You won't get bored with this whole monogamy thing, I giggle? Of course not. Besides, we can role-play if I ever get bored. He grasps my ass in his hand, and I jump in surprise. Kit, you're insane. I move around him to the floor, and he follows. But am I not your usual type? I turn and ask him. He refrains from rolling his eyes at me, and I wait patiently. I mean, I guess not, but who really has a type? He waves his hands. Apparently you, I laugh aloud. He sighs and licks his lips. She was blonde and tall, thinner than me, I add reluctantly. He frowns at me and shakes his head, looking me from head to toe. Come on, don't do that. He walks closer and clouds me with his intoxicating scent and gaze. And when you put it that way, yeah, I guess I had a type before. But that's only because I hung around the same places. Now, can we please let the past be in the past, he pleads. I look away at the green shrubbery and exhale. As much as I want to keep grilling him just to see the way he freaks out, he is right. I can't judge him for what or who he did in the past. I just have to believe that I'm here with him now, that he chooses me. Okay, fine. I hope you have food. I walk up to his front door and wait for him to key it open. He stops and smiles down at me, looking me in the eyes for a long time before he leans in to kiss me. His lips coax mine gently, softly, and my body starts fluttering to his in anticipation. It's like I am permanently in that state around him. We separate too soon and I follow him inside. Only if I get to eat it off you, too. Chapter 14 Kit Emily surprises me every day. Her presence in my life came by surprise for one, and I didn't think I could actually do this relationship thing until her. I only get excited about seeing her, talking to her, and I thought I was doing a pretty good job until tonight. I guess I forgot I have to actually tell her that she is my girlfriend rather than thinking it to myself or telling my friends. 
I wasn't even worried about her meeting them. She's easy to like. But there are a few guys I hoped wouldn't like her too much. Anyway, I never worried about my past catching up to me either. I only have so many guesses as to who that girl was, and I'm pissed that she upset Emily. But I just hope that I was able to quell her worries for a while. You said you had food? Emily peers in my fridge. She knows her way around by now. I barely pay attention to her accusation as I'm staring at her ass as she bends over. Her jeans fit her perfectly. That pert ass of hers drives me insane. I lied. I pick up the phone and dial the takeout number for some Chinese. I work out almost twice as long since I met her, so I don't lose my physique over all this food we have been eating. Figures. She shuts the fridge and opens a water bottle. I finish ordering and then turn my attention to her. What were you doing all day anyway? I ask her. She licks her lips and saunters over to me. Her bare feet brush mine as she comes closer and wraps her arms around my waist. Nothing exciting. She smiles up at me, and it makes me smile, too. I lean down and kiss her, nibbling on her bottom lip before I pull away. Hmm, I'm glad you're not mad at me, I chuckle. I was never mad at you. She licks her lips again and slides her hands down my sides, her nails digging into my muscles. Her mouth is twitching, and I assume that she's nervous, like when she told me she wanted it doggy style for the first time. Emily, I say with amusement, also horny as hell since my cock is so hard from her pressed up against it like this. Her fingers trail down the band of my jeans to the button, and she undoes it, driving the zipper down slowly after. I was thinking. She exhales and pulls my jeans down a bit. Then she rubs her hand over me and my breath hitches. My body is hot and cold at the same time, my cock pulsing with all the blood in my body. Since you've only been with me, she adds. I nod immediately. Yeah. I prompt, my voice going gruff. Her eyes bat up at me, the blue shining under the kitchen light. I want to taste you. She grips my cock in her hand and my knees buckle. I grip the countertop beside me and stare deeply at her. She smiles at me and starts pumping my cock in her hand, flicking her thumb across my piercing. She is damn good at that. I'd never been happier to have that piercing until her. But I'm glad that she trusts me, that we have this new level of trust between us. It's more than her getting down on her knees for me and sucking me off. Come here. I practically carry her over to the couch where I sit her down. I take her shirt off and then mine before I lean down to kiss her. Her hand goes back to my cock and I press forward as I grow harder for her. I break the kiss and stand up, tossing my shirt aside so there is nothing in the way. She stares at my cock with a hungry gaze as she grasps me at the base and kisses my tip. Shit, I groan, leaning my head back. I already know that I am not about to last very long. She keeps sucking at my tip, flicking her tongue over my piercing, as I leak pre-cum. She drives me absolutely wild and doesn't even know it. Then she sinks my cock further into her mouth, and I hit the back of her tongue. Emily, you've been holding out on me, I shudder. Mm-hmm. She hums around my cock and starts sucking slowly. I hold off for a while, letting her take control. I slip my fingers into her hair and grip her tightly as she bobs her mouth on my cock. Her mouth is so warm and she sucks me hard. I really have been missing out. My balls are already tight and I feel myself on the edge too soon. My hips buck against her and soon I'm fucking her mouth. Her sucking grows harder as her hand covers what her mouth can't reach. When she moans around my girth, I explode into her mouth and she swallows me up, drinking me down greedily. God, Emily, holy shit, I murmur. She giggles and sits back, wiping the corners of her mouth as she breathes heavily. My limp cock hangs heavily between us before I tuck it away, collapsing on the couch next to her with a huff. You enjoyed that? Her smile is wry as she snuggles up next to me. 
Fuck yeah, I did. I kiss her neck and then turn her over on the couch as I slip to the ground. Her eyes look at me in question before I start taking her jeans off. I kiss the swells of her tits peeking out of her bra. The blue lace matches her eyes and I pull it away to suck on one of her sweet nipples. Kit, that feels good, she breathes. Just you wait, baby, I chuckle and pull her jeans and panties off at the same time. She's already wet for me. I'm glad sucking me off aroused her so much. I taste you on my tongue every day, but it's nothing compared to the real thing. I trail kisses up her thigh as I inhale her scent and she starts to tremble in anticipation. I look up at her. She drops her jaw in pleasure and her pink nipple is harder than before, jutting out against the lace. When I reach her clit, I place an open mouth kiss over her folds before I suckle her. Nipping softly at her clit before I run my tongue over her, tasting even more of her. She starts gushing for me and I drink up every ounce of her, so damn good. I know all her sweet spots and get her to orgasm fast. Her thighs clamp around my face and I don't stop until her wave calms down. Oh my god, Kit. I don't think my legs work anymore. She falls into the couch and closes her eyes in relaxation. I smile at her and kiss back up her body, slipping her panties back on before I sit next to her. I'll carry you everywhere, I tell her. She leans up to kiss me, sliding her tongue into my mouth. I kiss her back hungrily and hold her close, but we are cut short by the doorbell. Food's here. I steal the last egg roll, which Emily doesn't like very much, but I make up for it with another bout of sex on the couch. At this point, once Amy finds out, I'm going to have to buy us a new one. But I don't really care much right now. Life is always perfect when I'm around Emily. It's like nothing else even exists. Stay the night. It's the weekend. So, Emily giggles against me. I haven't gotten her to stay over in a while. I guess she was more inclined to do it when she thought she'd never see me again. But I liked waking up with her there, even if it was that one time. Won't you miss me? I kiss her neck. She turns her attention from the sci-fi movie about vampires and turns to me. We move to my room to watch the movie. My bed is strewn with all the snacks she insists on having while enjoying our time together. Relatively. I tilt my head at her and tickle her side. She has my shirt on and it looks cute as hell on her, like always. What the fuck does that mean? I miss you in the mornings. I like waking up with you there, I say honestly. I lick my lips and grin at her. She just giggles at me and sighs. I have things to do in the mornings. Like what? I frown. I don't know. Cook? Clean? I wave her off. I'll cook breakfast, then we can go clean your house together, I reason. She laughs at me like she doesn't believe me, and I take minimal offense. I hug her to me and kiss her soft cheek, running my lips over to hers. Please, Emily, I want you to stay. I lower my voice. She pulls back and smiles at me softly. Okay. I smile. But you need to tell me in advance. I have hair products and face soap that I need, she says. I laugh at her but agree. Fine, but your face is perfect. Hence the face soap. It's a simple concept, Kit. She shakes her head at me. I laugh and hug her back to me. We settle in for more of the movie, and once it's over, I can tell that she is tired. She wakes up a lot earlier than me, and I feel bad for her, but she is pretty cute when she's sleepy. I talk her into a relaxing shower and promise no funny business. We just soap each other down and enjoy the feel of each other. I like taking care of her, even the small things especially when I get to roam my hands over every inch of her perfect body, massage her tits and her ass. This is what I call funny business, Kit, she murmurs against my chest. I laugh and get myself to stop. We rinse off just before the hot water runs out, and then we towel off. We climb into bed naked as I hold her, close to the edge of sleep. I get this heavy feeling in my chest I have never gotten before. One that I couldn't explain if I tried. Only to say that if I didn't have Emily in my life, I don't know what I'd do.
The person I was before her didn't care about other people's feelings that much, only tried to be honest. But now I know that it's more than that. It's about trust. And I don't think I've ever trusted anyone else besides my sister. Not enough to tell them about my parents and not wanting to take over the company from myself. Not wanting to move on from the current comfort in my life. But if change is Emily, I think I can handle a bit more of it. Kit, Kit, wake up. I feel Emily's fingers pressed to my face, dragging across my two-day stubble and over my lips. She makes funny shapes with them as I groan. My body is telling me that it's early as shit. Maybe she could have stayed home, I think, for a second, and then changed my mind as her tits press on my chest. What? I nip at her. My eyes still closed. I can feel the sun is out and shining through the window. We've had a bout of rain and could use some sunshine. What's your real name? She giggles. I grin and open my eyes groggily. Nice try. I sit up and rub at my eyes. Why are you awake so early? I glance at the clock and see that it says it's only seven in the morning. Fuck me. Because this is when I wake up. You asked for it. She pulls back the covers and sits back on her heels, bearing her naked body to me. My morning wood turns to a real hard-on and my skin heats up. Yeah, I did. Her eyes go to my erect cock against my stomach and I chuckle. Are you ever not turned on? She giggles. I shake my head. She rolls her eyes and gets out of bed, going to the bathroom. I take the opportunity to check my phone and get my head right. There is nothing from the guys. Last I checked, the Devil's Princes called a meeting with Rafe, but that's about it. But Amy did text me about the corporate meeting on Monday. I totally forgot about that, and the thought of going makes me sick. I only do it because I loved my parents and they would want me to do it. But running the whole thing is a completely different circumstance. Emily comes out of the bathroom and puts one of my shirts on. It fits her like a dress and leaves a lot of her legs bare. I smile at her, the way she appears and just makes everything better. I put my phone down and turn my attention to her. What do you want for breakfast? I ask her. She comes and sits on the edge of the bed. Waffles and fruit. She combs my hair back and kisses my forehead. She smells like mint and the scent of her shampoo still traced in her hair. I inhale her greedily and hug her close. She squeals when I start tickling her stomach and lay her down. I want you. I kiss her hard, my tongue driving with hers as I deepen the kiss. She wraps her legs around me and runs her hot pussy over my cock. I shudder and break the kiss, breathing against her. I grip her tits over the shirt and rub my palms over her nipples. Her body wiggles under me as I continue, running the tip of my cock over her. The piercing hits against her nub and I know it makes her crazy. Last night was the first time I went bareback with anyone. I'm glad it was her because the wait was fucking worth it. Fuck me, Kit. She rakes her nails down my chest and then drags over to grip my ass, bringing me closer to her. Fuck yes. I pull back and watch my cock sink inside her pink sweetness. She moans loudly and it hits my ears, but I lean down and kiss over her mouth. Shh, baby, my sister might be here. Her lips purse as she breathes deeply. I thrust all the way into her so I feel her walls clamp around me tighter. I pull out and know exactly when I hit the hood of her clit. She trembles and her hips rock against me. I bury my face in her neck as I nibble at her skin and fall into a rhythm. But from the way she grabs at me, meets my thrusts, I know she wants it harder. I lift up her hips and pull back, taking control of my thrusts. Her breasts bob under my shirt and somehow seeing them this way is even hotter, her pebbled nipples fighting the fabric. Oh, God, she whispers and bites down on her lip. I know she likes to be loud, it's like torture to be quiet, but I at least try to be respectful. Still, Emily makes me fucking crazy. I growl and go faster, feeling her close to the edge right in front of me. I about lose it when she reaches down and rubs her clit, her blue painted nails rubbing over herself. 
Soon she erupts into an orgasm that takes her whole body with it. Her eyes roll back into her head as her jaw goes slack. A small whimper escapes her as she keeps the rest down. I follow soon after, buried deep inside her as I come. I thought I won the lottery when she agreed to suck me off, but to be on the pill, too, is even fucking better. I watch my liquid seep out of her before I collapse on the bed. Fuck. I think I'm going to fall back asleep, I breathe deeply, my eyes closed as I'm in a land of serenity with Emily. She giggles and snuggles up next to me, kissing my forehead. Me too. Chapter 15 Emily I wake up for the second time today happier than the first. Kit has his arms wrapped around me, the muscles tight in his sleep. I'm glad he talked me into staying because the way he holds me is incomparable. Even in his sleep, he holds me like he doesn't want to let me go. I've never had that before, and I think that's what scares me the most. I can't put my finger on it yet, but the feelings I have for him are so consuming, sometimes I can't move, can't even breathe, like right now. But that's just because he rolled over onto me in his sleep, too. His body is incredibly hot, not just visually. My skin is sheened with sweat when I roll out from under him. But that could just be from our bout of morning sex, too. That would be enough to convince me to stay over any time. I make my way to the bathroom and take a lukewarm shower. It calms my body down and I can think straight again. I seem to always be in some sort of haze around Kit because he's so distracting. After that, I get out and put on another one of his shirts. Even though I didn't pack an overnight bag, I've learned to carry spare panties, so I put those on too. He is still asleep when I check my phone for any new messages. I only get one from the nurse saying that my dad is feeling good today, and from one of the moms whose kids I teach, thanking me for helping her son pass his test. It's not like I helped him that way. I just taught him. But he didn't do very well in the school setting, so he had to be homeschooled. I got a lot of those kind of students sometimes. I wait for Kit to start stirring awake because I don't want to walk around his house and accidentally run into his sister again. But he seems to be really out of it. He isn't a morning person at all. I noticed that after he wouldn't call or text until afternoon. At first, I thought he was just waiting a long time on purpose, but my day starts five hours before his, so it makes sense. Eventually, I get bored of waiting and set off anyway. His room is at the end of a long hall, painted a tan color and lined with family photos. They seem happy enough before I notice they are all staged photos and matching clothes. My dad and I have pictures everywhere, but they're of me playing in the background with the hose or working in his garage with him. I feel bad for Kit. He never really got to have that family unit thing. Only with Amy, but I'm sure they get lonely in this big house by themselves. Seriously, it's huge. I haven't even seen all of it. Kit mentioned a theater room, but we didn't exactly make it there all the times I've been here. I at least know my way back to the kitchen, though, and I start myself a pot of coffee because I'm looking forward to the waffles that Kit will make. There is a knock at the door that surprises me and makes me spill creamer all over the counter. Crap, I mutter to myself and throw a towel over it. I can't tell if Amy is home or not, but someone knocks again rather heavily. I move to answer it before I even think. It's not my house, I probably shouldn't be, but Kit nearly swung at me for even waking him up. I don't want him to be disturbed again. Yes? I swing the door open and am faced with an older man in a suit. His graying hair is slicked back, and he looks like something off those real estate shows on TV. Well, hi, you're not Amy. No, I'm not. I cross my arms and wish I threw something on over this shirt. He is holding a thick manila folder in his hands, and his smile is condescending. She's not in. That's fine. I'm looking for Christian. I furrow my brow in confusion until I think of the only other owner of the house. He's asleep. The man looks me from head to toe, and I almost shut the door in his face in response. Oh, well, that makes sense. Can you give this to him? He hands me the folder, and I eye it skeptically. 
No, sorry, I don't live here. I try and shut the door, but he stops me. It's important, miss. He narrows his eyes, and an odd chill runs down my back at his look. Whoever this guy is has some serious secrecy going on. I wish I hadn't answered the door. He shoves the folder my way again, and I look down at it. It's unmarked and could be a wad of cash for all I know. It's about the Valley Country neighborhood he asked about. Valley Country? My heart stops. That's the neighborhood I live in. Why would he have asked about that? I ask myself, but don't come up with any plausible answer. The man just shoves the folder my way again, and this time I take it just so he will leave. Have a good day. His eyes drop to my legs again, and I slam the door shut. The folder feels heavy in my hands. I know that it isn't any of my business, but the curiosity kills me. Still, I set it down on the counter and go sip at my coffee as my brain racks all the possibilities. I wonder why he would even want to know about where I live. What difference does it make to him? I know his family is in construction, but that still doesn't add up. My dad bought our house off someone else when I was ten, but that doesn't give me any answers either. The coffee just makes my heart race and I push it away half finished. Eventually I hear footsteps over the landing and then Kid appears in the archway, shirtless in his green boxers. Morning. Again. He grins at me. It calms me naturally and I smile back even though there is still a thousand questions running through my head. Hi. I moisten my lips and chew on my bottom lip with my nerves. Someone came asking for you. They left that. I point to the folder. He pushes off the doorframe and frowns at it. Who was it? He asks. Um, he didn't say. He was tall and had graying hair, had a suit on, I say. I didn't even think to ask for his name, but I have a feeling he wouldn't have told me anyway. The way he was looking at me was question enough. Oh, that's my uncle. He lifts the folder and peers inside, turning his lips down. Your uncle? I perk up in confusion. He chuckles once and nods, setting it back on the counter like he doesn't care about it. The sudden tension in his shoulders tells me he does, though, and the little frown line he gets between his brows. Yeah, my dad's brother. He starts moving around the kitchen like nothing happened, grabbing bowls and mixing up his protein shake. I didn't know you had an uncle. Yeah, we tend to pretend he doesn't exist. He more or less doesn't. He laughs once, and I wonder how he can be so casual about this. The question keeps slipping to my tongue, but I can't quite word it. We haven't disagreed on anything more important than dinner, and I don't want this to be the first time that we do. He didn't take you two in after your parents died, I ask in surprise. Nope. He has his back turned to me as he plugs in the waffle maker. I'm surprised he remembered. Then, again, it isn't much of a surprise. Kit isn't a very forgetful person, and he is very intentional. So if he asked about my neighborhood, it was for a reason. Oh, sorry. That's okay. He's a total asshole if you didn't notice. I take a deep breath and close my eyes, opening them back to the bright lights of his kitchen and his back, and he whisks the waffle batter. I noticed, I murmur. Kit doesn't seem like a bad guy. I don't think he'd do anything to hurt me. Then again, I haven't known him all that long, but with us, time never seemed to matter. I trust him and don't know why, but that still doesn't explain anything for me. Kit? I ask, my heart skipping a beat. He turns and faces me. What's up? His brows raise like he doesn't know at all or suspect that I would know. He said you asked him about the neighborhood I live in. Why? My voice is softer than usual when I am talking to him. His half-smile falls, and he crosses his arms as he inhales a deep breath. He starts and stops a few times before he actually lands on something. They were talking about redeveloping the area a few years back. I wanted to make sure they tabled the idea, he answers. I frown in confusion. Why? I ask him. It can't be just because I live there. That wouldn't make much sense at all. It's full of other houses, too. Because if they redevelop, he trails off. You ever have someone knock on your door and ask if you're selling your house? He asks, walking over to me. I shake my head. 
He leans on the counter in front of me, his eyes focusing on mine. That's because Clemens Construction, my family's company, owns the neighborhood. If you ever tried to sell your house, it would have to go through one of our brokers, so we still get a profit from it. Okay. I wish I was smart enough to see where he was going with this, but my knowledge extends to elementary education and a little psychology. That's it. So if they tried to redevelop, it wouldn't do them any good to buy you out. They'd lose money. They would just resell the land to another company that can legally get rid of you. After I saw where you lived, I told my uncle that the board should table the idea, he finishes. I stare at him for a second, though, as I process what he is saying. I thought it would be something bad, but now I don't even know what that bad thing could be. It only sounds like he was doing something nice for me, something a lot of people probably wouldn't. I guess I should say thank you, I sniff, and notice the waffle iron is too hot with no batter on it. Well, don't burn your house down, I remind him, and he jumps into action. Anyway, I planned on telling you I just didn't really know how. There isn't ever a good time to get into that kind of stuff. He talks over himself as he works. What's in the folder, then? I ask him. He turns and shrugs. Oh, nothing. Probably just the quarterly reports. You made a face, I say. He purses his lips at me and rolls his eyes. I shake my head at him, not backing down. He gets a break, though, to check on the waffle. He removes it and pours another batch on, and he doesn't really answer me until we sit down to eat. At least he remembered my fruit. My uncle wants to run the company and buy me out, he says. But you don't want to. I thought as much. He finishes chewing and turns to me. Well, sure, I don't want to, but it was my parents' company, not his, so I kind of have to. You don't have to do something you don't want to do. I rest my hand on his knee. He nods once and his eyes pass from mine. I know, but I've been thinking about it for a while, and wanting to do it isn't really the issue. He sighs. My uncle put my shares of the company in the paperwork on selling your neighborhood in there. That's why I made a face. He leans back and pushes his half-eaten plate away. Kit always finishes his food, and if he lost his appetite, he must be pretty upset. But I feel upset for him, too, the fact that he had to go through this. I'm not sure if he should have told me his family's company owns my neighborhood, but if they are trying to sell it and leave me homeless, I guess a heads up would have been okay. If his uncle never came, I wonder if he ever would have told me about it in the first place. So he's threatening to buy you out if you don't let them... I barely finish before he nods. I sigh and shake my head at the whole thing. But he's your family. Why would he do that to you? My voice draws. It sounds completely unorthodox, and I just feel for him. Money, he frowns. I don't want that to happen to me if I take over. It's why him and my dad never got along, and they're brothers. They were always fighting over how to run the company, and my dad just shoved him out. But then he died, and I never wanted anything to do with it, so now he's the CEO. But I still have the biggest share. They can't do anything without my approval, he explains. I force myself not to gawk at the smart business side of him. It's incredibly attractive and focus on the situation at hand. How does he know that place matters to you, though? You didn't tell him about me, I assume. And I don't do that to trap him into it. They clearly don't get along, so I know that's probably not the case. Because I asked. He drops his shoulders. That simple, I laugh once. Yeah, he's a businessman, ruthless. They can tell these kinds of things. Was your dad like that? I asked softly. He more or less hinted that he didn't pay him much attention, but I hope it wasn't to that extent. Not really. He wasn't that much of an asshole. Not with us, at least. He shrugs. He gets up to shag out plates, and I watch as he does. Something else is bothering him, but I can't put my finger on it. All I know is this conversation is giving me a headache. Thanks for breakfast, I murmur and stand up. You're welcome, he says over his shoulder. I leave him in the kitchen and go back upstairs, planning to wait for him. But I just processed a ton of information and feel like I need a break. I think Kit should have told me about his company owning my neighborhood, but I talk myself out of it because it hasn't been that long. He has still told me that I mean a lot to him, 
that he wouldn't keep things from me. I put myself in his shoes and know that I would have told him if it were me. I start getting dressed and I'm tying my hair up when he walks in. You're leaving? His deep voice fills the room. I finish and turn to him. Yeah, I told you I have to clean and stuff. I swallow. It isn't a lie. I do have to clean the house today. And I can't keep letting our relationship keep me from my regular life. We said we'd do that together. He smiles and walks toward me, stopping a few inches away. I stare up into his eyes at his smiling face. My insides swarm with warmth, but I try to focus here. I thought you were joking. No, of course not. You said that's why you couldn't stay, and I wanted you to. I wouldn't lie to get you to do something. His fingertips trail the inside of my wrists, and my body starts singing for him already. I blink slowly and smile softly at him. You're so sweet, Kit. I hold his shoulder and then wrap both my arms around his neck, drawing him close. He grins and holds me around the waist. Or I guess I should say, Christian? I giggle once. His face falls and I swear the color drains from it too. It only makes me laugh harder. Fuck, I hate that guy. My uncle is out to ruin me. I laugh. Why, it's a nice name. I lick my lips and lean into his body. Christian, I smirk. He shakes his head and groans, leaning in to kiss my neck. I like my nickname. It's short. It makes me sound less honest. Why wouldn't you want to be honest? I laugh at him. He licks his lips. I'm a badass biker, that's why. Oh, God. No, you're not. I hug him and smile against his chest. While I still have slight reservations, I have decided to take this as a learning moment. He told me the truth when it mattered, and I'm glad for that. I can't shake the feeling this isn't over yet, but I decide to leave that alone and be in the moment for now. That strong feeling I had this morning is starting to reveal itself as something more. Something that makes me lose reason just for the sake of Kit. I haven't decided if it will hurt me in the long run yet. Chapter 16 Kit There are about a thousand things I'd like to say to my uncle, but now really isn't the time. If Emily weren't here, I would have called him and given him a piece of my mind, but every time I do that, it doesn't work anyway. He is a total prick. Only cares about money. I didn't know how much until today. Emily can't know the truth. She has enough to worry about in her own life, her dad being sick. Knowing that she'll probably lose her house, too, would just add to that and make things worse. If I told her the company already started the process, she would have lost her shit and maybe blamed me. I am too scared to lose her to let that happen. I just have to hope I can move fast enough to stop it, whatever that takes. All I want to do is enjoy my time with her and decide if these feelings I have aren't all just in my head, and if she feels the same way. I have never told anyone I love them before. Not in that way, at least. There should be a manual or something, because I have no fucking clue how to do it. If I asked the guys at the club, they would just laugh at me or some shit, and I don't really want to deal with that. They would mean well eventually, but I don't want to get psyched out. I almost told her last night, but I couldn't go through with it. I was afraid I'd scare her off, and then that would be the end of it. But now that my shitty Uncle Mark made an appearance, he really put a damper on stuff. I can tell that it bothered her, and it was a miracle I convinced her not to rush out of here. I plan to spend the whole day with her anyway, but I will just have to see how she feels once we get to her place. You need to learn how to do this yourself one of these days. I joke with her as I buckle up her helmet. It's not her fault, though. The band is tricky, and I never got around to fixing it. No one uses this helmet. Amy stopped riding with me when I joked about throwing her off the bike. That didn't go over well, clearly. No thanks, she giggles. Emily smiles at me, and it tugs right at my heart. I have never met anyone like her, so genuine and funny and damn gorgeous. But I love her because she always let me be me, even when I didn't know who that was. Let's go. I kiss her lips quickly, and then we set off. I know where her house is, and my chest tightens at the thought again. 
She has so much to deal with already, and I want to be able to tell her that I took care of things already before it even gets bad, but it might already be bad. I just don't know by how much. It really is a twist of fate or coincidence that we even met, and that I'm involved in this, but that isn't enough to make me run off and avoid it. I pull up to her house and smile at seeing the Chevy parked in the garage when she lets us in. Have you driven it? I ask her. I did a pretty good job on it, a fast one, too, but I'm just glad that it made her happy. No, not yet, she says. I figure she is waiting for her dad, but I don't want to go there just yet. We walk into her kitchen and she offers me water. I take it and lean on the counter, looking at some of the photos she has around. They are all of her and her dad, no other family members. He looks like he was healthy, and I'm guessing his illness came as a surprise to them both. My heart goes out to her because I know how she feels, but I don't want her to know what it's like to lose a parent. She walks off somewhere, and I don't know where, as I look around her house. The furniture is all mismatched, but in a charming way. The purple couch and brown armchair shouldn't really go together, but they do. I want to know what her room looks like, and I figure I will at some point. Emily, where did you run off to? I call out. I traipse back through the house to the kitchen and find her at the mail stand. Her shoulders are tensed up, and I know that means she is thinking. What's the name of your family's company again? She says, her voice tight. I swallow hard as I guess what she is looking at from behind. I stuff my hands in my pockets and wince. Clemens Construction. Why? I ask like I don't already know the answer. Isn't this what you told me you were avoiding? That you said was already taken care of? She turns around and shows me a letter I don't have to read from far away to know that it says, Notice to leave, which in real estate terms is just a nice eviction notice. They must have already hired the third-party company, and my eyes shut slowly as my heart sinks. When I open them again, her eyes are laced with tears, and I step forward to comfort her, but she stops me. No, don't. She lifts her hand. I frown and stop. I'm sorry. You lied, she concludes. I didn't lie. I wouldn't lie to you, Emily, I swear. I hold out my hands, and she shakes her head, throwing the letter down. I didn't know that. I would have warned you, but I didn't know what to do, I tell her honestly. You know how much I've been dealing with, Kit. You should have tried. My mouth opens to try and tell her that I do know, and that I would never hurt her. But that seems impossible. It all feels impossible to me because I have never done this before. But if I tell her that I love her, then it will just seem like I am lying, using it as an excuse to play stupid and lose my head. But it is true. I do love her and I have no idea how to get this heartbroken look off her face. Emily, I start. She shakes her head at me, and I think of how to plead my case. But they all involve withholding the truth from her, and I don't really want to do that again. Not anymore. She deserves more than that. More than me. And I should have known from the beginning. Kit, please leave, she whispers. My heart pounds in my ears at hearing those words. It's almost deafening. They are the words you never want to hear someone say, but hearing them in her voice makes my heart break. I know I will never get it out of my head. How hurt she sounds. How hurt she looks. And it's all my fucking fault. I'm so sorry, I tell her again. But that doesn't seem to matter. It shouldn't. I lied to her, and she trusted me to tell her the truth, especially since I promised her that I always would, that I would always tell her the truth no matter what. And now this happens. I'm leaving, but I'm just sorry, Emily. I really am. I turn and find my way to the front door, leaving and stomping down her porch steps. I make it to the end of the driveway before I stop outright. Three houses across the street have for sale signs up, and they don't look like nicer houses. They look like the kind that have people selling them out of desperation to avoid being without a home and without any money. The guys in the corporate office of my dad's company have no idea what they do to these families. When they decide that they are going to evict them and get rid of them without notice, 
that it doesn't matter to them where they go or what even happens to them. It isn't fair, and I know I should play a part in fixing it, but I don't know how. If I took over the company, I would be coaxed into the wrong decisions by the board. Maybe they would even try and buy me out. My uncle already tried to. It was my indecision that even left me in this position. If I decided before to let it go, he would have left the neighborhood alone. But I was holding on to the part of myself that wanted to be somebody but couldn't. That part of me has now hurt Emily, the only woman I have ever loved. I get on my bike and race down the street, headed towards the only place that makes sense to me now. The club saved me from having nothing to do with my life, from having nowhere to go when I lost my way. Amy couldn't help me after my parents passed as much as she tried. I almost lost her, too. I figured my life out late in the game, and I dragged Emily into the parts that were ugly that would hurt her. I love her so much that it hurts, but I don't think that matters much now. When I first met her, I didn't even know if I could pay attention to only one woman. Having multiple options kept me from ever having to make a real decision, but focusing on her, on one good thing, it made me better. But it only left her worse off. All I can do is find a way to help her, and it won't even be to win her back. It would just be to make sure that she is going to be okay, even when I am gone. I could beg her to forgive me, but it would never take away the fact that I hurt her beyond what any person deserves. What pains me the most is that I promised her that I would never break her heart. I promised myself, but that never counted for anything. Chapter 17 Kit I walk into the club and only feel worse. Because the last time I was here, Emily was with me. Having her meet everyone was like accepting the fact that she is in my life now. And not just that, but really enjoying it. I didn't think I was cut out for that kind of thing because I never tried doing it before. Now I just fucked it up. When I sit at the bar, Spencer is already there with Janine. I didn't know she was back in town, but then I remember it's almost the end of summer and she hasn't come back to school yet. I'm glad there aren't that many people in here right now, less prying eyes. I texted Darius, but I don't even think he's in town right now. The last thing I want to do is text Emily and bother her when she probably just wants her space. So, I figure I'll numb that pain inside with alcohol, but I'm not even sure I should be drinking. This place relaxes me, gives me a place to think, free of charge and judgment. You want a beer? Spencer comes over to me when he finishes talking up Janine. I'm still shocked the two of them got together. I didn't think Spencer had the balls to go up against Tank, but he sure did. I don't know. I rub my face and set my phone down. He leans on the counter and gives me a funny look. He's an inquisitive type of guy, so I've noticed anyways. He may be new around here, but he pulls his own weight and has an in with all the guys. It could just be because he's the Prez's brother, but I wouldn't put my money on that. How's that? He laughs once and sets a beer in front of me anyways. I frown and take a swig, but I might need something stronger to get into all this. You know my parents' construction company? I ask him. Yeah, they own like half the town, don't they? I roll my eyes when he puts it that way. Technically, they just own the company that builds on it. The rest is free game, but the difference doesn't really matter to me right now. Yeah, and the neighborhood Emily lives in, I say slowly. My throat tightens at recounting this. I should have seen it coming honestly, but I guess I was just in denial. Oh, did she find out and get mad at you for lying about being rich or something? He snickers. I shake my head. I wish it were that easy. I finish my beer and lean back with an exasperated sigh. No, not exactly. My uncle, he wants to buy everyone out and build a huge complex there. He got like ten investors involved in it already, but he needs my vote to actually do anything about it. I met Emily after I knew about that place, and then I told him to table the idea. Now that I say it out loud, I realize I should have known what he was going to do. I may not want to run the company, but I know how those guys work. They have something they don't want you to have, so they want it more. 
I guess I didn't think my own uncle would play me like that, though. So he found out about Emily or something? Spencer makes a face. Someone at the other end of the bar asks for a drink, so he does that and comes back. I notice Janine chatting up Chantal and assume Logan is around here somewhere, too. No, I never said anything like that. I just asked him not to. And he's an asshole, so naturally, I gruff. Spencer chuckles at my disposition and pours me a drink. Neat bourbon this time. Right, so she got mad about that. Well, not really. I told her that I took care of it when I really hadn't. They already sent her a notice to leave. I swallow back the acid that rises at that reality. The thought of Emily having nowhere to go makes me sick, and I should probably think of how to start helping her instead of wallowing in my own self-pity. But maybe I could wallow for a little while. Shit, that's rough. Your company does that kind of shit? He crosses his arms. No, and it's not my company, technically at least. Even though they own the house, a company can hire brokers to try and buy the tenants out. She could get paid for the house, but she would still have to find another place. And what if she doesn't want to go? I shrug like I don't know the answer, when I actually do. Dad had plenty of those lawsuits coming around. They would just sue the tenants until they run out of money to fight and end up being bought out for cheaper anyway. It's a shitty system, hence why I avoided it for so long. She doesn't have to, it just feels like it's all my fault. I sip my drink and whine at the burn. I mean, in hindsight, how pissed is she? He asks. And I remember her face right before I left. It still makes me shrivel up on the inside. I hate what I did to her, and that it could have all been avoided, too. Very pissed. I think it might be over. I swallowed hard. I try and think if I would even forgive myself for lying, for letting her think she could trust me. Probably not. I don't think so. She seemed to really like you. Maybe she just needs time, and to not lose her house. He chuckles once. I don't take it personally, though, because he's just a light-hearted guy like that. I don't know. I really feel for her. I wish I could say it happened by accident, and I wasn't expecting this, but that wouldn't be true. I knew as soon as I saw her that this would happen, that I would care for her more than I have for anyone else before. I know the feeling. I mean, with Janine. I knew I was probably going to get the shit kicked out of me, but I did it anyway. So, she knew what she was getting into with you. At least it wasn't because you cheated or something. I half smile. Cheating isn't my thing. I've never been in that position before, but even if I was, I would rather just end it than hurt someone that way. So, I should have just been honest with Emily, too. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I slide my glass over for another drink. It will have to be my last one because I need to get myself home safely. Sorry, man, Spencer shrugs. I nod and have more of my drink. I sit there for a while and exchange conversation with Janine and Chantal. They're nice girls, but it's half-hearted because my mind is still racing. Logan was around like I suspected, and Spencer fills in a colorful story of what happened for him. But I get most of the same advice. Emily needs her space for a while, but I still have to figure out a way to help her. It's the least I can do for her, and that only means one thing. I'm here to see Mark Clemens, I say to the receptionist. She's a cute blonde, and it only makes sense that she works for my uncle. He used to bring around all kinds of people when I was growing up. Every holiday, he had a different woman on his arm, with little distinction between them. He's not in right now. She doesn't look up from the phone her long nails are texting on. I frown and shift in my shoes. I hate wearing suits. It took two days to psych myself up to even do this. All of which I obsessed over Emily and refrained from calling. Yeah, he is. Tell him it's Christian. I insist. She sighs and finally looks up. I groan inside, but grin at her the same way I would if I was picking up a girl, and it works. She bats her eyes and stands, pushing out her chest to me. I can take you to his office. She walks around the desk and sways her hips. Her small frame only reminds me of Emily. 
the way her full hips would drive me crazy even when she wasn't trying. In fact, she didn't have to try anything. I just loved her for being her. Thanks, I tell the girl when we get there. I swing the door open and don't spare her a second look. My uncle's office is generically plain and huge, looking out over the city. I rarely ever come downtown for the sake of avoiding seeing this huge building plastered in the center of it. Christian, what are you doing here? He stands and adjusts his tie, hanging loosely. Mine is making my head hurt. What are you planning on doing with Valley Country? I ask him outright. I cross the space to stand in front of his desk and stop. He frowns at me, and sometimes I hate the way he looks just like Dad. He's younger than him, but they always looked just alike. People thought they were twins growing up. Kind of the same way Amy and I look just alike, too. Being here makes me miss him, and I rarely ever do. It was never anything that bothered me, kept me up at night. He was a barely present father, and he died the same way. That was the end of it. What does it matter to you? You've asked me about that place twice now, and you don't even work here. He walks around his desk to pour himself a drink. I stare at it like I need one, too. I probably do. He offers, and I shake my head no. I need a level head for this. It doesn't, I lie. But I'm getting tired of your squandering our reputation. He turns and laughs. Our? He makes a face and sips his scotch. I can tell by the color and smell. Plus, it's all he ever used to drink. Yes, this place is more mine than yours, I say, and I actually believe it that time. This company was always supposed to be mine, not his. It's my birthright, and if all this has taught me anything, it's that I can't run from it. Whatever you say, Christian. I hate when he says my full name. Everyone else in my family went with Kit when I asked them to accept it. Leave it alone. I'm serious. You don't need the money that bad. This company doesn't. I know that for sure because I still look at the quarterly reports line by line. It would only be to stuff his pockets full, maybe do something that's not even warranted. I don't need it for the company. He looks at me as he finishes his drink and then walks over to the desk, leaning up against it and facing me. It takes me longer than I might have wanted, but then I understand what he is trying to say. You need more money than that to buy me out. Amy, too, I say. I can't believe he would be that sleazy, but it all makes sense now. If he developed that community, he could buy me out of the company without using any of the capital we already have, leaving him richer than before when I get my shares. It's crazy how your own family sometimes is worth less than blood. Even the guys at the club would never try anything like this. Look, don't take it personally, kid. It's just business. Spare me. I stuff my hands in my pockets so I don't swing at him, and I honestly need to because he is really testing me this time around. He sighs and shakes his head. Look, if that place means so much to you, then just sell your shares and leave the company. It's simple. Someone can take over after me. I think I've knocked up at least three women by now. Wouldn't it be nice if they got to have the nice living you grew up with? No, I spit, and at the same time the stark realization dawns on me. I wondered for a long time why it was so natural for me to leave a trail of women behind when my dad has always been a straight arrow. I guess I'm more like my uncle than I wanted to be, but I'm not like that anymore. Emily is all that matters to me. But she's the one that really convinced me to go after this. Even if this hadn't happened, I'd be on my way here soon enough. But I could buy you out if I wanted to, I remind him. His face falls and he starts taking this more seriously, as he should. You wouldn't do that. Yeah, I would. Especially if you keep pursuing that development. You're putting people out on their ass. Our business was never about that and it wasn't reaching its full potential that way either. I groan and walk around the chair to get some distance from him. I comb my fingers through my hair in frustration. You know we're going to have to come to an agreement one way or another. Pick your battles, Mark. I don't even call him Uncle Mark because he doesn't deserve it. Not from me. I have, 
It's you that's indecisive. It's the smugness in his eyes that takes me over the edge. I wanted to do this better, without causing too much talk in the company. Change is hard, especially in family companies like this. Amy and I discussed it, and she supports me, whatever I want to do. The person I really wanted to hear from wants nothing to do with me, but that won't stop me from being a better person, a better man. I'm not indecisive. You want to know what I'm doing here? I ask, like he did when I first walked in. His smile falls and he stands straight up, facing me like a man and not as the child he used to know. And to think I looked up to him at one point, wanted to be like him. The thought is unsettling. What? He gives up. I swallow and look around the room, not feeling like I don't belong in this building anymore. In this world my father built for me to have. I'm here to take my company back. Chapter 18 Emily I leave the last house for the day feeling exhausted. It's been like that for the past few weeks. I would wake up tired, go to bed exhausted, and then do it all over again. Slugging through each day like they didn't matter. I guess after I ended things with Kit, they didn't matter. For the past month, he's called me once a day, and I can't bring myself to answer the phone. After the first few weeks, I thought he would give up, but he hasn't. I suspect that he will one of these days, and thinking about that makes me sick. But if I can't pick up the phone now, then I shouldn't expect him to keep waiting for me. Telling him to leave wasn't exactly a breakup. I feel like I should tell him at some point that this is really over. It just doesn't feel that way in my heart yet. It took him leaving for me to realize how much he really meant to me. I have never been in love before. But if love means feeling physically drained when someone you have spent time with leaves your life, then I guess I am deeply in it. He was honest and kind, genuine in a way that only he could pull off, and I miss that. I long for it every time I wake up without him. I start to forget what it feels like to kiss him, to be in his arms the way he smells, and even how he looks when he smiles. We took a few pictures together, but I brashly deleted them, and I wish I hadn't. I drive by the club sometimes to feel closer to him, but even that doesn't go over well. I feel farther away from him every day, and I desperately want to be back close to him, but he hurt me so much that I can't fathom it right now. He had a few opportunities to be honest with me, and he didn't take them. He knew about this longer than I did, and he never said anything. The fact that he kept the truth from me makes me feel sick inside, and that I trusted him. It doesn't make me love him any less, but I wish it did because without trust nothing would ever work. As soon as I found out what the company was trying to do, I researched how to get out of it, but they all involved selling the house to avoid a ton of legal fees. My neighbors got the same letter, and I know of two that already sold. I can't bring myself to put the house on the market, though. I grew up here. This is where everything important happened to me. I want it to be here for Dad to come home to. I hope every day for there to be another way out of this, but it all amounts to me going there in person and sorting this out. If I could maybe get them to leave this whole thing alone, then everyone else wouldn't have to lose their houses, too. It's nerve-wracking going into something that I don't understand. But I think of it being the same way I teach the kids, embarking on something they don't understand. Loving Kit was the same thing. I didn't understand it, but I did it anyway. He can come home? Yes, he can. I stare at my dad's nurse with wide eyes. My entire body goes cold and hot at the same time as my heart races. I've dreamed of this moment for almost two years now wishing that all this wouldn't be for nothing, that I wouldn't have to say goodbye to my father so soon. I, I don't know what to say. I smile, holding back tears. But I'm sure she has seen all kinds of tearful moments in here and so let them fall. I wipe them away, but they just keep coming. I'm so elated that I could scream. After everything that has happened, this is the first good moment I've had in two months. Well, you don't have to say anything. She smiles with me. Thank you. I figured that should be standard. 
They all did a really good job of taking care of my dad, of caring for him when I couldn't. This is the only positive thing that's happened to me, and I'm milking every minute of it. But this is good for Dad, too. This will make him so happy. I know he didn't like needing help, not being able to take care of himself. No one does, really. You're welcome. Just a few things to go over. She starts explaining everything to me in more detail, and I listen carefully, even though my head is spinning. This day has done a complete 180. Waking up with that same dreaded feeling and then trudging through work. I was looking forward to visiting Dad, but I didn't think it would be this good of news. He still has to come for a visit twice a month, and if anything comes up, I should take him to the doctor. I know he will be honest in telling me how he feels every day because he has to be, but this makes me so happy I can scream, all until I realize I have to make sure he still has a home to come back to. Hi, I need to see Mark Clemens, please, I say nicely to the receptionist, who hasn't looked up from her phone since I walked up to her desk in the center of this overly modern building. It sits right in the middle of downtown, Clemens Construction, LLC. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly, the way everything is silver or gray, and it looks like the future a bit. Plus, it is cold as hell and I feel underdressed, even though I found my best pair of flats and a blue dress I wore to my last job interview. I even did my hair, ironing it flat. I have been planning for this so long, it feels surreal. I couldn't even make an appointment online, like this guy doesn't exist or doesn't want people finding him. I wouldn't either if I was leaving people homeless. I just bit the bullet and decided to show up. I probably could have asked Kit, but I didn't want to use that as an excuse to talk to him. I'm not ready yet anyway. I would just become a puddle to his antics. After I brought Dad home, I told him everything. He is doing much better and was worried about me doing this, but I don't want him to lose the house he worked so hard to get for us. I couldn't leave out the boyfriend part of it, but all he said was that I should trust my gut. It's all I have now anyway. He's not in, she mutters in an annoyingly chipper voice. Are you sure? Can you check? It's really important, I ask her. Even though I haven't worked out exactly what to say, I have a good feeling appealing to his business mindset will help me. A public lawsuit against him wouldn't do much good for this company. I don't know how much that would cost, but I kept every option open. It might have been easier to talk to Kit about this, but he also could have helped me sooner, and he didn't. I'm positive. He hasn't worked here in weeks, she answers, finally looking up. She gives me a funny look, and I ignore it. Her face is blatantly pretty, and I definitely don't look that way, but this isn't high school. Seriously? I gape. Maybe he already fled the city with his money. I really hate that guy, and I don't even know him. Yep, she pops her lip, half smiling at me. Was it important? She raises her brow. God, she probably thinks I'm sleeping with him or some shit. Yes, he is trying to buy me out of my house, I explained, though I don't think she would even know the importance of that statement. Oh yeah, that does seem important. You can talk to the new CEO if you want. The new CEO, I repeat back. God, I must sound so stupid, but this is all coming as a surprise. I had this huge plan of what I would do, and now it is all crumbling. Does a new CEO mean I keep my house? I have no idea. I wasn't ready to tee off with a stranger. Yeah, Christian. His nephew runs the company now. My heart stalls in my chest and my jaw visibly drops. I look at her with this eerie realization that I might shit my pants right here. I swallow hard, my mouth going dry at the memory. The way Kit talked about this place. I was almost sure he wouldn't run the company. I didn't think he would turn into the corporate type, but the possibility... I blink the thought away and remind myself that's not why I'm here. But can I still even face him now? Oh, Kit is really the new CEO? I double-check, sounding stupid again. She giggles and nods. You know him or something? She looks over me like the possibility is wild. Yeah, he's my ex, I say, just to piss her off. 
It reminds me of that woman in the bathroom trying to throw me off. I've learned better now, and to think that all happened the night before I ended things, too. Oh, he broke up with you, huh? She assumes with a sneering smile. I have so much pent-up anger I could go cat-crazy on her, but I don't. And as I start to answer her, she perks up, her eyes widening. I stare in confusion before I'm interrupted. No, she broke up with me. The voice cuts through me like a knife. The deep crisp of Kit's voice falling over me like I have not heard it in ages. I suppose I haven't. His voicemails aren't the same. This is the real thing. I turn and see him standing behind me in a blue suit that offsets his eyes, hugs his entire frame. I don't know if I like this better or the jeans and leather jacket more. His hair is slicked back and jawline harder because he is clean-shaven. His eyes blaze at me wide as he looks at me in shock. I am sure I am looking at him the same way and try not to hang my mouth open at him the whole time. It's just... It has been so long since I have seen him that it is hard to believe this is real. But here he is, right in the center of this building. His company. I think that to myself and find it hard to believe. He always wanted to do this. I could see it in his eyes whenever he talked about it. And I'm glad that he did. I'm speechless, standing here staring at him. The receptionist is still there, and I feel her burning a hole in the back of my head. I wonder if they slept together and wish that I hadn't. I could say that I don't think he would do that to me, but I also broke up with him. He can do whatever he wants. But whatever he wants is also calling me every day, leaving a message and a text saying how sorry he is. That has to count for something. You have an appointment coming in soon, Christian, his receptionist says, his own name like she owns him. I watch his face fall and am glad because that means he at least doesn't have a thing for her. He doesn't belong to me anymore, though. It would be unfair of me to think that way. But here I am, thinking of him as mine. My heart thinks that he is. The rest of me is having trouble catching up. Cancel it, he snaps. His lips form a hard line as he stares at me. He must be wondering what I am doing here, why I didn't return his calls. I didn't know he worked here, otherwise I might not have shown up. The thought is unsettling, to say the least. I try and find the right words, but saying I'm sorry isn't fair because I haven't done anything wrong. Not really, at least. Being away from him, letting him go, that felt wrong. You want to come in my office? he asks. His hands are in his pockets and his legs outstretched a bit. The power stance is hot as hell. I forgot how damn good-looking he is. It weakens my knees and my resolves. I can think of nothing better than sitting down and talking to him, but part of me is still afraid. Then I look in his eyes and see how he is pleading with me through them. My heart goes out to him. My heart has belonged to him since we first met. Yes. Chapter 19 Emily I follow Kit to his office on shaky knees. I honestly feel like I am in a movie or something because this is the last thing I expected to be doing. Following my ex-boyfriend to his corner office. The ex that used to be a biker, or still is, I have no idea. Those times I passed by the club on the way to work, I would see his bike by the garage, so I know he still goes there. My heart patters out of my chest by the time we reach his office. He lets me in first, and I brush past him. My arm hits the edge of his jacket, and it puts me on edge. My body has missed his presence, and he feels so close, yet so far away at the same time. Even as I stand in the center of his office, staring at him, leaning against his closed door. Nice office, I murmur. I barely looked around, but all I saw that was personal is a picture of him and his sister on a bookshelf that probably has stage books on it and not real ones. It is a corner office, though, and the sunlight from the open city streams in, casting his blonde hair in a light glow. His jawline is hard against the collar of his white shirt. His whole suit look is quite distracting, however I look at it. It's all right, 
he half smiles. I have missed that permanent half smile of his. I don't get it fully now, but it's almost there. You haven't returned any of my calls, he says, pushing off the door. He walks around to a tray with a water carafe on it and empty glasses. He offers it to me, but I decline. My throat is so tight I can't drink anything. I'm afraid even water will try and come back up. I wasn't ready to talk to you, I say honestly. I cross my arms and stand with my back straight. But you came all the way down here? He puts his hands in his pockets. He is only about five paces away from me, and yet I feel like he is breathing down my neck. His presence just does that to me. I feel him all around me, even when he was away. I didn't know you worked here. None of your messages said anything about a change of scenery, I swallow. So you listen to my voicemails, then, he concludes. I nod and feel myself falling back into a comfort with him, into an ease that he always gave me. I never had it before with anyone. Felt like I could be honest and true to myself, but he made me so blissful even when he wasn't around. I thought I needed other people, other things to be happy, but now I know that I don't. I liked hearing your voice, I admit. I lick my lips and awkwardly wait for his response. He chuckles once and moistens his lips. Imagine how I felt, not hearing yours. His voice is soft, yet the deepness is what takes me away. Everything from before starts to slip further away. All the problems I had with him, how I felt about him, becomes the only thing that matters. How I still feel. The way he looks at me now, how he never gave up on trying to contact me. It all comes to the forefront of my mind. Not very good, I assume, I clear my throat. Anyway, I came to ask about my house. I was planning on giving Mark a piece of my mind, but he's not here, so... No, he's not, he finishes for me. I bought him out. Now I own more of this company than I did before, he explains. I look at him and try not to let the hotness of that come over me. I need to focus here. I'm guessing that's a lot? I look in his eyes. He nods once and twists his lips. I could never decide what I wanted to do. I thought if I avoided this place long enough, it would be like my parents never died. But they did. And my uncle was running their good name into the ground. I had to step in at some point, he tells me. But he doesn't sound all that convinced of it. I drop my arms and tuck my hair behind my ear. A nervous tick, as I think. But that's not the whole reason, he adds. I give him an odd look as I blink. He starts walking forward and I tense up, my throat growing tighter. I feel my heartbeat in my ears. It's almost like the first night we met, when I didn't know what was going to happen, but the energy between us was so strong that I had no choice but to succumb to it. That energy only grew stronger, and now we're here. It was because of you, Emily. Not just wanting you to keep your house, but... Even before, every time you listened to me and never told me what to do, you were there for me. He sighs and looks down at the ground, his long lashes fanning across his cheekbones. I take the next step closer to him and we are arm's length apart. His scent warms me, a new cologne and less of the piney scent. I'm guessing he doesn't ride his bike here anymore. I fell in love with you, Emily, and I still love you. Loving you made me a better man even without you there. I fucking miss you. A lot. Every damn day I kick myself for not being honest with you. Especially since it's the only thing you've ever asked of me. I'm sorry. His voice seeps with emotion and my eyes fill with tears before I can stop them. Luckily they don't fall and mess up my makeup. You've said that before, I swallow. All the times he has said he is sorry could paint me a portrait, except the love part. I repeat like I can't believe it, and I can't. Him loving me? I never saw that coming. It was never about being insecure or not thinking I deserved it. But Kit and I almost wasn't supposed to happen. 
It's not a written-in-the-stars kind of thing. But I still love him, too. Yeah, I know. You must be pretty tired of that now. He exhales and sits down, taking another deep breath. He looks like he has wanted to say that for a while and only just now did it. He combs his hair back and looks up at me from the chair. I debate it only for a second before I go and sit down next to him. Not yet, I sigh. I pick at my knee and it's my turn to get the weighing truth off my chest. His knee brushes mine and tingles run up my body, pulling at my face as I feel it heat. I look into his clear eyes and see my soul in them. It takes my breath away. I think it wouldn't have hurt as much if I didn't love you, too. When I felt like you had been hiding something from me, you reassured me and I believed you so easily. It was like I couldn't trust myself when I found out that was a lie, too. But even when you were gone, I still love you more. My voice cracks as a single tear drips down my cheek. I quickly wipe it away and have to look away from him, taking a deep breath. It does feel like my entire world just crashed and rebuilt itself. Admitting that I love him makes me feel slightly better, less suffocated. It doesn't help me decide if I can trust him or not, though. If I love him enough to overlook that now. Emily. He takes my hand and I let him. His other hand lifts cautiously to my chin and he lifts it up to look at him. He licks his lips and smiles softly at me. I didn't think. I never saw myself loving someone the way I love you, Emily. It made me stupid. I know that's not an excuse, but I've never done this before. I didn't know how to handle it. I thought I was doing the best thing for you until I could figure out how to help you. I sniff in my tears. And did you? I ask curiously. I never heard back after emailing the company, checking with the loan office. It's like they didn't care at all and it's what made me come here. Yeah, of course I did. I shut the whole project down, refunded people's money, gave restitution so they wouldn't sue. It's what my dad would have done, he explains. I breathe a sigh of relief at another crisis averted. Thank you, I tell him genuinely. You're welcome, he smiles at me. I've really missed his smile, the way it lights up his whole face. Everything about him lights up my life. I hadn't realized I was living in darkness for so long. Plunged back into it when I made him leave. I wonder what would have happened if I had been more patient, but things had to work out this way for a reason. We needed the space to appreciate what it meant to be close to each other. Fuck. Kit growls before he leans in the space to kiss me. It takes me by surprise, but I react to him immediately. I kiss him back, dropping my lips open to allow his in. He coaxes them apart softly, sucking at my bottom lip like he always used to do. It's so familiar, yet I still feel like it has been forever since I have touched him, been with him. I lace my fingers into his hair and pull myself closer to him. His hands slide up my waist and hold me closer drawing me against him as he leans back on the couch. His tongue slips over my bottom lip and I moan against him, desire pooling in my body. It's not fair that he has so much control over me, that it's so easy to give in to him. But I want to. Every time I want to. I love him so much that it hurts. God, Emily, I missed you. Kit groans into my mouth and kisses me again, harder this time. Our lips mash together in a blind fury as I literally see stars. I run my hands down his muscular chest, getting familiar again. I run them down over his suit jacket, clinging to his arms, and moan against him. He moves us on the couch so he is between my legs, and his suited thigh rubs against my pussy, throbbing for him. I grind my hips against him relentlessly, desperately clinging to his body. He breaks the kiss and moves down my chest, trailing kisses all across my collarbone and my cleavage in the dress. You're so damned gorgeous, so perfect, I love you so fucking much. He climbs back up my body and kisses my lips before I can respond. 
Instead, I just unbuckle his pants, furiously trying to get to his cock. He breaks the kiss and groans against my skin, tugging down one strap of my dress to expose my breast. My hard nipple hits the cold air before his warm mouth suckles it. I can't believe I'm really about to fuck him in his office, but damn, I want him so bad it's just too easy. I missed you, Kit. I giggle against him when he nibbles this spot below my ear. I sigh and close my eyes when I wrap my hand around his cock. It feels like he never left. I run my thumb up his piercing and he shudders. I turn against his head laid on my chest as he nips at me and breathe into his ear. Christian, I whisper, my voice softer than ever. He pulls back and his eyes blaze at me, glowing in the bright light of the room. I have never liked my fucking name until now. He drags his hand down my body and cups my pussy, his hand rubbing right over my clit. I cry out but try not to be too loud. He slips my panties to the side as he pumps me with his fingers. All three feel tight as hell, but nothing compares to his thick cock. It feels dirty and desperate when he enters me with his pants still on and my panties just slip to the side, but good as hell. Oh my God! I cling to him as he sinks deep inside me, fitting perfectly. He groans into my ear, deep in his chest so it vibrates against me. I wish I could feel all of his naked body on mine, but this will have to suffice. He grips my hips as he starts going. There is no sweet and slow here, just two people that desperately want each other. It really has been too long. I'm surprised I even made it. But the pain makes it so much sweeter. It's like meeting him for the first time all over again. The same way we met, too. He rubs against my clit every time he drives into me and brings me closer to orgasm. My body starts a slow rumble of pleasure, stemming from my core. I turn and kiss him. Our tongues slide together as we taste each other and delve deeper into pleasure. I'm coming, Christian. Oh, God. I whisper. He looks at me with his face contorted in pleasure and we come at the same time. My clenching wraps his cock as he empties into me and his heat seeps into my bones. We stay holding each other tightly as we catch our breath, and he kisses me again, slowly driving his lips and tongue with mine. That was so fucking good, baby. He kisses my cheek. I love you. He looks in my eyes and then kisses me again. I sink into him and feel like my heart really is mating with his. I love you too, I say when he releases me. It's like I could kiss him forever, like he could kiss me forever too. We eventually get up, and I'm glad I kept up the purse maintenance thing that makes it easier to get cleaned up. I feel less like this was a hookup when I gather my wits. Is that the first time you've had sex in your office? I ask him. I help myself to some of that water now. Yeah, of course. This is the first time I've inhabited this place, he chuckles. He tightens his tie and grins at me. But I want to do things right by you. You're more than an office couch hookup to me, he says seriously. I giggle once. I know, and it was fun. I smile, and after we got through the heavy stuff, it's the perfect way to de-stress. Maybe it could be a semi-regular thing. His grin is sheepish. I laugh and walk over to him. You should be so lucky. I hug him around his waist and he holds me close. So everything is really okay with my house, I ask him. His face softens at me. Yeah, it is. I'm really sorry about that. I shrug. It's in the past. I've had better news to tide me over, I sigh. Like? he asks, and he freaks out a bit about thinking that it was another guy. I roll my eyes at him before I explain. My dad got better enough to come home. He's been back for about a month now, I tell him with a huge smile. He smiles, too, like it's his own good news, and it makes me feel even better. That's great. I'm so happy for you, he pauses. Shit, I have to meet him now. I'm kind of scared, he chuckles nervously. 
Who said you could? I joke. He swings me around and sits me on the edge of the couch. I look up at him as he thinks. Well, I want to. I want to be serious with you, Emily. This is the real thing for me, he says. Every time he gets all serious with me, I feel like a puddle of happiness. It's unnerving, and I can't believe the rest of my life might be like that. It is for me, too, I swallow. It's not like I'm afraid he will get sick again just from meeting someone, but I guess I am just trying to protect him a little too much. Good, but we can take it slow if you want, amongst other things. He licks his lips and trails his hands up my bare legs. This dress really was a good choice. Agreed. I lean up and kiss his cheek. So, do you still work at the club, too? I ask him. Well, I never worked there. I was just in it. But, yeah, I'm still around. I could never leave them behind, he says. I smile at him being so loyal. That's who he is at the end of the day. It's what makes me overlook what happened and look forward to the future with him. Good. I like the leather jacket. And the bike, I giggle. He grins and kisses my cheek, trailing his lips over to mine. I kiss him back. We do that for quite a while, alternating between him kissing at my neck and stuff. My entire body is lit up with happiness until he pulls away when there's a knock at the door. It's his stuffy receptionist again. It makes me mad how much she wants his dick, but I know that he'd never do anything about it. I don't think we're at that place where I can tell him to fire her. Not that I'd ever do that anyway. Duty calls, baby. He kisses me and I reluctantly release him. This time, though, I know he'll be coming back to me. Chapter 20 Kit I didn't think I'd be able to do a good job here. I thought it'd be one of those awkward fall-flat-on-my-face things. But I didn't. In fact, I was better at it because I didn't spend the better part of my life in school. I spent it in the real world, and I used that to keep this company running. Better than before. But Emily. I would wake up every day and wish I could see her again. Wish she was next to me. I'd go to bed wishing for the same thing. Now it's real. I still feel like I don't deserve her, but it only makes me want to do everything I can to keep her more than the last time. I rushed through the rest of my meetings excited to see her again. I agreed to meet her at her house after. I don't get out until six, and then I have to go home and change. I smell like sex and corporate business. Now I know why they make so many shows about it. I'll probably never see that office the same way again, and I only just started using it. You look happy. My sister is in the kitchen when I get home, snacking on mac and cheese, to no surprise. Because I am, I tell her. I have been moping around and pissing her off sometimes with leaving my comfort food laying around. But she's really helped me get through this, talk over all my wandering thoughts about sadness and hating life. Oh, how? She frowns. I grin and swig some water. Emily, I answer. And that's all the truth I need. She called you back? She asks in shock. No. Technically, she wasn't planning on seeing me today at all. She came to the office to hand it to Mark, but as you know, he's gone. Anyway, we saw each other, and that's pretty much it. Oh my god! You used your penis to persuade her? What? Fuck no. That came after. I laugh once. She shakes her head at me and laughs. Whatever, I'm happy for you. Waiting for the wedding. She stuffs her mouth with mac and cheese and I shudder. She eats like a total slob. I gotta head out. I'm going to her place now. Okay, be safe, she jokes. I shower fast and change into jeans and a t-shirt. Throw my cut on, too. I'm so damn happy this all feels like a dream to me, but I'm about to walk back into the reality. The last time I was here, things didn't end so well. I feel nervous as I walk up the porch steps and knock. Emily appears a few moments later and she takes my breath away. 
Even in jeans and a huge peach-colored sweater, she looks incredible. You're late. She lets me in, and I stand in her doorway. I'm getting used to riding my bike again, I chuckle. You are? She makes a face. I lean down and kiss her before I answer. Yeah, I drive something else to my big boy job, I laugh. It's hard to give it up, but it wasn't like I was wanting for cars. My dad's 87 Impala was still fixed up and collecting dust in the garage. How nice. You hungry? I made lasagna. She waltzes into her kitchen and I follow her. The pictures she has around the house and decorations seem very like her. Starving. Where's your dad? I realize I'm whispering a little. Maybe I really am worried about meeting him. I just love Emily so much, I don't want to mess it up. He's been in his office all day. He goes over all his old car reports most of the time since he's been back. She makes us a plate, and we sit and eat together. I fill her in on some of the other stuff going on with the company. She tells me about the kids' final exams. She lights up when she talks about her work. Maybe I will too one day, but I guess I'll just have to see when I get there. This is the criminal charity work you've been hanging out with. A deep voice comes out of nowhere, and I almost choke on my beer. Emily giggles and turns around. Hi, Dad, and no, not technically at least. She laughs at me and takes my hand. Um, hello, Mr. Danielson. I stand and offer to shake his hand. He walks over to me slowly, controlled in his movements. I guess he isn't all that mobile yet, but I wouldn't know. He has graying hair and an older face, and he doesn't look too old. He mostly looks like Emily does. Alex is fine. Dad, this is Christian. Um, Kit. Emily introduces me. I smile at her. She's really the only one that can use my full name, and I enjoy it. Nice to meet you. I swallow and sit back down. He gives me a blank face I can't actually read as he grabs a beer from the box in front of us. I know Emily wants to scold him for it, but she doesn't. Hmm. You know, Emily never did the boyfriend thing. I was prepared to find out she's a lesbian. Dad, you promised you'd never say that out loud. Emily shrieks, and I see her turn redder than ever before. I laugh at her, though, and hold her hand. Well, I'm glad that's not the case, I guess. It's the meds, her dad explains himself. He goes through the usual questions of what I do and how we met, one of which we lie about, the other is kind of hard to explain. But once he knows I know about cars, it's easy to get him to like me. At least, I think so. We talk for a while until he gets tired. I suppose he has to turn in early still. You look like you're going to throw up. Emily laughs at me and starts putting the plates away. I've never met anyone's dad before. I take a long sip of beer and finally start to calm down. No more clammy sweat on my neck. It was fine. He likes you. He was glaring at me. That's just his face, she giggles. I smile at how happy she is. I get up and walk over to her, hugging her close to me. I can't wait to get her in bed and take my time with her, but I obviously can't do that here. Can I ask you something? I kiss her cheek and hum into her neck. I missed her smell so much, the softness of her skin. Me and my hand got very bored. What's that? She kisses the corner of my mouth and combs my hair back, cupping my face in her soft palm. I inhale softly and look into her eyes. If we get married, we can't kick your dad out of his house, and we definitely can't live with my sister. That's not a question, she laughs, and I'm glad that she doesn't flinch at me mentioning marriage. It's not like I have immediate plans. I'm not like Rafe. I need to take things slow. I guess I'm asking what you would want to do, I chuckle softly. She smiles slowly and slides her hands down my back. I don't want to live in an apartment. That's about it. Seriously? I ask her. I don't think I have to explain how much I can swing for. She's seen the company that I own. It's not hard to put the pieces together. Yeah, I mean, 
I wouldn't want to leave my dad, but I can't live with him forever. Neither of us should live in our childhood homes forever, she giggles. I smile at her and agree, leaning in to kiss her cheek. I pull back and stare into her eyes, wishing I could freeze this moment right here. Emily, I don't care where I am as long as I'm with you forever. Epilogue Kit Emily trails her foot up my thigh and I pinch her hand. She's been doing it the whole time and I'm about to give up and take her out of here, but I would never hear the end of that. Are white coats some kind of aphrodisiac for you? I lean down and whisper in her ear, hoping no one in the audience can hear me. Maybe. Do you have one? She giggles and kisses my ear, flicking her tongue against the line. I groan and feel my cock hardening. This video will be very hard to explain to my sister. I can get one. I turn and kiss her and then try to focus on the ceremony. It's been about nine months since we've been back together, and they've all been perfect. Unless we're arguing about what to eat for dinner. We get to know each other more every day, and that's the best part. I go to work every day and come home to her. Sometimes we go to the club and have sex in the garage. It's the perfect arrangement. I love her more than I did before, if that's even possible, and I enjoy every second of it. We figured out the whole living together thing. No marriage yet. But I think about it all the time. We got a place close to the house that she works at and my company and still close enough to see her dad every day. He is still doing better and has gotten even stronger, too. I'm glad because it makes her happy. She makes me happy. Finally, it's Amy's turn to get her white coat to put on and the medical school diploma, or whatever it's called. I'm so fucking happy for her, and after all she did for me and still finished medical school on top of it, it's amazing. She looks ecstatic, and I wave to her from the crowd. I think she's mostly just glad I didn't go in her clinic and get tested every three months anymore. Emily and I only exchange the best sex of our lives. See, it's finished. Quick and dirty. We stand in the crowd of people and start trying to leave. Oh my god, Kit, you're insane. You brought it up. I nudge her side and then hold her close to me. Her cute pink dress is fitted and shows off her tits just the way I like it. If I could, I'd pick out all her dresses for her. True. I think I see her. She leads us through the crowd toward Amy and I spot her too. We hug and all that jazz, then get out of the crowd of people super fast. She already did her match day and whatnot, but she decided to stay local so she could still live in the house. Everything just kind of fell into place the way it's supposed to. Once we get home after our celebratory dinner, we planned on resting before going to the club for more celebrating. But Emily and I took way too much time in bed, having sex every way I could think of until my dick was limp. All the things we go through together have made us stronger, have made our love stronger. The kind I never thought I would get, or deserve, but she gives me everything and more. All I can do is return it to her. The kind of meeting that started as a one-night stand and turned into something more like a fairy tale. I loved every minute of it. For Emily and me, it's our forever. This has been Robin, an MC Romance, Outlaw MC Book 4, written by Ethan Egorov, narrated by Richard Manley, copyright 2019 by Ethan Egorov, Production copyright by Ethan Egorov.